Hey there, lovely soul. I'm Infinity and welcome to your pick read for the new moon in Aries today for 11, 2021 or for 12, 2021, depending on where you live. It'll be universal time, UK time at 311 AM. It'll be 1031 for the East Coast and then uh, 731 PM for Pacific. And that's where I have happen to be so it happens to be right now 10 22 a.m here on april 11th this is when i was guided to do these readings i know a lot of a lot of readers do their readings way ahead of the actual event and it just never works out like that for me i'm i'm usually guided to tap in with the energies of the full moon of the new moon of the stargate of the eclipse of whatever it is on the actual day or right around it so i am actually going to be doing these readings right now here on the 11th i'm going to be doing four for you so you can pick one two three or four whichever one is calling out to you we're going to get into some Oracle and Tarot. And um, I just wanted to do a quick overview of the energies about this new moon. Now it is in Aries. We are in Aries. Um, the, sun, sun's, the sun is in Aries. The moon is in Aries. And it is at 22 degrees, which is a master number. And that is um, the 22 is it represents the architect of peace. The uh, theme for the month of April is to connect to the divine, to connect to our, especially our guardian angels and just all of the angelic realms, the archangels, uh, the dragons are also of angelic origin. And so if you're feeling a lot of dragon energy, really feeling angels and thinking about angels and archangels, and that tends to come up um this is probably why and we are still in the stargate the stargate ends here on the 14th that'll be our our landing day and they last for 10 days so it starts at the four at the fourth lands on the 14th and then we have our uh landing day and so it's a it's an 11 day thing but we can definitely feel it before and after i get into the uh stargate in another video so check that out um please i will put the link in the description and try to remember to put the uh the card up here but if you go to my channel i have um there, I think there's three videos about the Stargate. So it's just information about this specific Stargate from the 4th to the 14th. And then um, I also have a meditation and, um, and I also did some, um, well, just for the beginning of, for the whole month, for April, I did reads for the, for the whole month. But this is, um, this is and those were specific for the signs so if you want to go to my channel check out those um those readings sun moon rising i suggest you check them out uh they're real they were really great really awesome reads but today we're gonna get into four separate reads for you guys and um um, but the theme of for the theme of the new moon we have and oh I suggest if you don't watch her Tanya Gabrielle is great she's an astro numerologist so she combines numerology and astrology which I love I I really am tapped into to both things but I'm not an astrologer I'm not a numerologist um, I just I get a lot of number codes <laughs> thrown at me and light codes and stuff that has to do with numbers and numerology and angel numbers and if you follow me on Instagram you'll see that I post pretty frequently about numbers and and angel numbers and number codes I just did last night about 11 11 as of course I looked at the phone and it was 11 minutes um it was 12 11 on the 11th it was midnight um so I was like, oh, there we go. We're already getting the 11s. Like as soon as I could see 11-11 in the new day, I was seeing 11-11. So 
Um, but anyway, so Tanya Gabrielle, she is a astronumerologist. She's really awesome. She has a really popular channel. So I suggest if you don't watch her to watch her, watch her video about the, this new moon, lots of great information. But here's some of the, the buzzwords that she used. First off, she, um, she, uh, named her video align with the divine and I was like oh that's perfect because that um, that's really the theme for the Stargate is aligning with your angels aligning with that top tier guidance that really is so um, connected to your psychic impressions and visions and intuition and your guardian angel is constantly working with you and giving you information and for even people who are like don't believe in that don't feel it don't communicate with it they still have a guardian angel and their guardian angel is still constantly guiding them and guarding them and helping them and in so many 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 ways it's it's really amazing how much our guardian angels are an integral part of our lives um, but if you really seek out the communication the relationship the connection with your guardian angels then um you absolutely will um have that be more of a thing for you you'll just it'll go from being sort of abstract and ambiguous a little bit to literally having this back and forth um conversation and you know it takes time because that's your also your psychic abilities and your your how clear and in flow you are in your body with your energy because the the more static the more density you have going on the harder it is to to get any kind of outside influence let alone you know even or even i should say you're from your guardian angels and really be able to feel that and see it and hear it clearly so so you always want to be working towards being as energetically clear and clean and healthy and really making yourself healthy as possible because that will up your your game as far as uh, your ascension, your connections, your vibration, your psychic abilities, and all of that good stuff. Okay, so um, she said that basically the theme for this new moon was stabilize and calm your energy. So those are the vibrations coming through with this new moon. Love, affection, creativity, freedom, truth, nurture, discovery, surrender, patience, forgiveness, passion, intuition, psychic abilities, and finally, divine flow. So to kind of sum up what she said, she's like, you you have a choice. And that's is also a thing with the with the Stargate and the new moon being in the Stargate and towards the end of the Stargate is that we always have a choice of, of how we're going to react, how we're going to communicate, how we're going to deal with other people, how we're going to deal with ourselves, how are how honest are we going to be, how truthful, how much are we going to seek the truth how much are we gonna go into our our ego and our egoic mind and and be willful and want to control are we gonna go with divine flow are we just gonna be patient patience is let's see here at the very top patience is at the very top it's super super important um uh, love is love on one side at the top patience on the other side there at the top and there's a reason for that because to be in the pocket of love divine love divine guidance unconditional love to feel that within ourselves to to feel that for ourselves to feel that come from our divine guides and guardians to feel that that purity from our souls uh is is everything that's 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 how we can can just let go of the the negativity and so the lighter we are when we let go of densities and negativity we become light the lighter we are the higher in frequency we get the higher in frequency we get the the ability to understand to bring in to have our our eyes our all our three eyes open up and be able to see perceive understand 
find more, integrate, acclimate, um, ascend, basically. And so I'm being reminded the three R's you can think of. This is a really easy, quick mantra. I release so I may receive. I release, I receive, I remember, I rise. I release, I receive, I remember, I rise. So when you release density, uh, negative energy, no matter how, how you happen to do it, because there's many, many ways to do it, you release so you can receive, so you can remember, remember the truth, remember yourself, remember your connection with your soul and the divine and your infinite nature as a soul. And you remember, 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 that's awakening. It's remembering. Um, I wish it was called spiritual remembering. That might help <laughs> people to understand. So anyway, remember and then rise in frequency and it just goes and goes and goes. And that's a wheel that never stops turning as long as you're alive. You're never, ever done. You're never done healing. You're never done clearing. You're never done connecting. You're never done downloading. You're never done um, with your evolution, with the particular body that you're in right now. And so it's really important to, to decide to make very clear decisions. You're going to set your shit aside. You're going to try all this stuff. You're going to get into the pocket of love, allow for affection. However, that is just lean into affection. However, that could be in your life. Creativity, really open up to the divine downloads and the inspiration and the motivation to create, to use color, to paint, to, to create food dishes, to landscape, to whatever it is that you do, music, movies, it, the, we're created to create. We're in a creational uh, world. This dimension is all about creation. We're constant, she's, Gaia's constantly creating and we're constantly needed to adapt and create um, to go with the flow of, of time and energy and cause in the cosmic balance and our place in the universe, which is changing. Um, and we move closer and closer to our galactic center. That's what the stargates are all about, is, our, is everything getting, getting moved closer and those 10 days jump us it's like a power boost and that power boost affects timelines it's made to dissolve create and solidify timelines in each of our individual lives and then collectively because we're all together or connected so anyway freedom letting go of the programs and thought forms that keep us confined in any way we're really being uh guided by our divine counterparts the angelics to be like you are free you just need to get into the mindset of what it is to be free because a lot of our our illusions our fears our stresses our anxieties our that what's put upon us the ideas for our um our identities our purpose like all of that a lot of that can be very constrained um, by our experiences, our history, the people in our lives, ourselves, whatever. We really need to, we really need to shatter that, like just, just explode that out and be in a, in a more of a state of that divine flow means there's no, the divine flow doesn't have a structure around it. It's, completely open and in flow to move in whatever way it needs to we're the ones that want absolutes and logic and structure and all of that human shit that tells us there is control and i'm in control and i so i can feel this or do this or move in this way instead of just allowing for the flow and being patient and knowing that if we're in that in that you know it's really funny i'm hearing faith and that's not on here that's really funny faith kind of to me faith is that word that encompasses all of these words um 
truly <laughs> truth nurture yourself discovery that you want to discover about you about the world about the universe about how things work about your soul about your past lives um all of these things uh surrender again surrender patience forgiveness that's a big one right forgiveness is a huge one and that's a tough one patience and forgiveness i think are probably and and money issues are probably the toughest ones for people to um to break free from and and we're getting a lot of downloads coming in a lot of light workers are getting little pops into little little fissures are, are forming so we can see into our, our Akashic records or be guided to those that can help us with that because those are, are definitely little nuggets of information that helps us in the now. Okay, so for more, you know, for a deep dive into the new moon on an astrological, planetary, cosmic type of way, um, I suggest that you watch Tanya's video on the new moon. And with that, let's get into it here. It is, whoa, it is 1038 here in the Pacific, 138. That's kind of a magical number. I'm um, representing the one, which is you, the three, which is um, unconditional love and connection with divine masters. And then the eight uh, representing um, infinity. So one, three, eight is kind of like, it, it's very much a divine, um, it's aligning with that divine. It's telling you that you're in that pocket of working and being um, connected into the, into the flow. So it's really awesome. That's the time right now. Okay. So we are going to get into our first reading. So if you're going to join me for that, stay with me here. If not, you're going to go down and look at the timestamps to go to the either second, third or fourth reading for you. But stay here and we'll get into the first one now. All right, here we go. Number one, we're going to start with Moonology my number ones uh we're gonna get one card for moonology we're gonna get tarot we're gonna we're gonna hear from the archangels abundance we're gonna get into frequency and crystals so let's start here number ones the end of a tough cycle of approaches yay Oh, I'm already liking this. I love this for the new moon. The end of a tough cycle approaches. I That makes me really excited. I think that this new moon, this is really, and Tanya talked about it. This is really like the year is beginning. It's really like now that we did one, two, and three months starting off this year, we built our foundation. Things have been smoothed out. People came, people left. You started this, you ended that. You're in a, you're in a spot of knowing more, of wanting more. And, um, and being and having the motivation, the energy to kind of move in a certain direction is really like where we're at right now. But anyway, the end of a tough cycle approaches. <sighs> yeah, I feel like there's definitely been some challenges here. Um, I'm seeing multiple things multiple things and right now i am shuffling our um let me turn that over these are the archangel uh the major arcana cards in the angel tarot and uh by doreen virtue and radley valentine so what i've done is pulled out the major arcana only because it's obviously it's just a little piece of the deck but it's just the major arcana so this one, the high priestess, Archangel Haniel coming in to say hello to you. Listen to your intuition, have patience. 
consider carefully what you want before acting. So um, we talked about how patience needs to be a big thing here in, in the intro. The high priestess coming in um, definitely um downloads heightened awareness is going to come in it's kind of like this releasing of energy not being blocked anymore i'm kind of hearing here um if there has been a different circumstances different blockings blockages um different reasons and different things all happening at once i'm feeling um and this have patience thing at the end of a tough cycle approaches approaches and have patience it's like um i'm hearing it's like hearing watching water boil like stop looking at it stop staring at it um because it's just gonna it's just gonna feel like it's gonna take longer if you keep watching the the pot for the water to boil kind of thing and it's like you need to occupy yourself. You need to move forward in the ways that you can and and let the flow take in and let the natural, like I'm seeing, I'm literally seeing um, like in the mountains where there's snow, where it's icy and where, it, you know, we're turning from winter to spring and the ice starting to melt and it because it's the beginning of spring and that's that's we that's where we're at and um and that it's just gonna take some time to heat for things to naturally heat up and allow for the flow to really come through and rush in but i definitely feel this this is super exciting because once it does it's like whoosh all the way through it's just gonna go down the mountain and through your energy through your life and you see her oh, i don't even know if i showed you this card sorry about that um, you see this card here, you see her, her hands open and she has a book in her hand. So, so it's literally saying like, she's like pointing to, she's pointing at the book to me. She's saying, occupy yourself with expanding your knowledge, expanding your creativity, getting into something, doing stuff, follow and listen to your guides and guardians, listen to your intuition about where to put your energy as far as, um, uh, t uh something creative or, t or something that you're to, um, to work on as a project, some, or like a course you're going to take, or a book to, a literal, like a book to read. It could even be the Bible, and I'm not a religious person, um, but the Bible does definitely have a lot, like a lot of people who didn't grow up in a religious household and, and life like me. Um, it's not a bad idea to get a Bible and just start flipping through it and reading passages and seeing what comes because it's very it's it's it is there's a lot of hidden gems and and messages and and it's so it's so multi-layered so that alone if that speaks to you go for it because that sh she definitely showed me that she's like for some people they may really want to gravitate to that not to religion not and not to take it word for word to dig deep to find the truth within the superficial um stories and and teachings and stuff okay let me get a this is the sacred geometry oracle but with this one kind of the same as with the angel tarot i was guided to just pull out the frequency cards the solfuego um frequency cards to figure out here for you give you a really easy indication here what um what frequency you should listen to and what we just got was 396 and that is liberate guilt and fear great great advice liberate guilt and fear and the next thing i'm thinking i'm um, seeing here is the meditation that i did right around the middle of february it was very specific it's a, it's one of my more, more popular meditations on my on my channel it is for healing fear shame guilt um feelings of unworthiness uh and associated to love money 
all sorts of stuff. So it's a really amazing, I channel all my meditations so I don't like design them or any of that. I just get called to do something and I do it and it comes through me. I connect with Gaia and the angels, the archangels, all everybody. And, but Gaia, our mother earth Gaia is the one who really um, is painting the picture for me and I'm connecting with her and I'm um, pulling you through this healing uh, meditation. That's just how they, all the meditations that I do. So, which I'm also going to be doing one. I did, did I mention that in the intro? I'm going to be doing a new moon med meditation. Um, so anyway, 396, liberate gear, guilt and fear. Um, there may be trepidation about like, there's been a lot. I'm seeing there's so many different things that have gone down in like the last 18, 12, six months. Um, and a lot of fires to put out a lot of energies, you know, a lot of like moving, kind of trying to go forward, but then things coming in, getting in the way kind of thing. Um, and I feel it's like you could, I'm here and you couldn't do it all. Things fell through. Um, not everything worked out for the best. It has been a tough time. Um, but that again this card here at the end of a tough cycle approaches love this card it is full moon in capricorn so we have this great full moon in capricorn energy coming in for this new moon beautiful number one um and it really is time to like i'm hearing it really is time to release the past release the negativity of the past of what i'm hearing what didn't work out what wasn't perfect um i think i'm hearing that you took on a decent amount that wasn't even yours and you just because you're you are you you're a caring person you're a perfectionist you want things to work out you want to help everybody you you know and there was a lot going on i think with you and with other people that you just you know it, it was just a lot i'm hearing a lot so healing definitely needs to take place here um healing the the feelings the density the emotion we need to cut cords let's listen to that 396 let's release some um densities guilt shame that sort of thing declutter you'll feel better and more focused if you take the time to clear away clutter from your living and workspace donate what you can to help others who may need your items be sure to keep your schedule uncluttered as well so here we go this is um angels of abundance oracle uh so th these are um this is guidance and advice from the angels to how to raise your frequency, how to bring abundance into your world, into your life, declutter. So today, tomorrow would be a great day with this new moon to just go around your, your office or your workspace or and especially your home where you sleep, where you eat, where your kitchen, your bed, go through the entire house and just take some inventory. First thing um, that they're showing is think about what you're not super attached to, that you're just like, it's been there forever. I don't even see it. <laughs> like it's was meaningful at one time. Like there's criteria for things that are in your space that like if it was gone you wouldn't miss it it wouldn't break your heart if you know if it got destroyed it but you could, but when you think about it going to somebody else either gifting it or donating it it makes you feel good so go around your home and just take inventory don't move anything just yet just take mental inventory and for the next couple of days just look at your stuff and see what you have that can go. Because most people have too much shit. Most people hold on to stuff that they don't need, they don't use, that's outdated, that has nothing to do with them and what they're doing or how they're living anymore. Most people, I'm not saying everybody, but most people do. 
And so we just tend, we're, we're very much creatures of habit. Like if we've had it for, we just keep having it. And then we, until we go, why do I have this? And another thing to think about is as you get rid of stuff, you make room for, for the stuff that actually is in alignment with where you are now. So declutter is the first one. And also she's pointing me to declutter your schedule. So pare down, just, just look at your, what you do Monday through Sunday. How does your week look? What are you doing? Who are you hanging out with after, after work? Or what do you do with your evenings? How are you spending your, your time off? Like that sort of thing. And maybe for the rest of April, pull things out that don't need to be there and create more free time for yourself. Create more time to create, to play, to do nature, to be outside, to paint or draw or, or whatever it is that you do. Create music, um, write, whatever it is. Um, do that. <laughs> Spend less time doing things that, you know, are, are an output of energy with others and make it an input of energy with you. Okay, next one, block out distractions. <laughs> your life purpose and other priorities need your undivided attention. So it's time for you to take charge of your schedule and working. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, I love it when a card uh, literally validates what I just got done saying. <laughs> It cracks me up. So it's time for you to take charge of your schedule and working environment by turning off electronics and avoiding anyone or anything that distracts you from what's important. You already know what these distractions are and you have the power to responsibly block them out. I don't think I need to go into get, I don't think I need to elaborate on that. We're going to get one more. And no more, com oh, did I even show you that card? I'm not doing very well today at showing cards. I'm so sorry. Block out distractions. Here, you see this? You see that? I'm feeling Archangel Gabriel saying, please listen to me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna toot a horn and your guardian angel. I'm gonna toot a horn every time. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna feel it in your body. You may hear it. You may, something may happen here where it's like when you're, allowing yourself to be distracted and time is ticking you're gonna get a little eh, a little a little something something i'm feeling that's gonna go come on let's move it along and and don't fight it don't fight it it happens to me like i'll go down some i'll i'll i get i every we all get distracted but what's important is go oh I'm distracted. What was I doing? And get back to what you were doing or not let some one thing turn into this, you know, a long thing and allow for, for your guides to come in and poke you and pay and listen, pay attention, and then allow for them to steer you away from the distraction. So declutter, no more complaining. Um, wait, where did that one come from? I'm so confused right now. Declutter. <laughs> okay. I don't know where this came from. This is so confusing, but that'll be... That'll be our next card. I don't know what just happened. That is very weird. Okay, whatever. We're going with this. No more complete. I'm not sure what just happened. So I have declutter. I have block out distractions. Oh, we had the, uh, no? Yeah, I don't know. That's so weird. Okay, anyway, going with this. No more complaining. And if I just, like, that is so, so weird. I don't know why. I, I don't know. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. We're continuing because I look down, I'm seeing this card that I didn't see and I don't know where it fell out of and, but here it is. No more complaining. Complaints are affirmations of victimhood. 
uh, which is never true spiritually. Take back your God-given power by affirming that you have an abundance of choices and freedom. With your increased confidence and assertiveness, watch these positive affirmations blossom into reality. So complaints are affirmations of victimhood. So if you find yourself complaining, that's another way to be distracted, or listening to people complaining and then joining in, then don't partake and even say, you know what, I'm trying really hard to keep my keep myself positive. They understand vibrational stuff. Just be like, I'm trying to keep my vibration high and I don't, you know, gossiping and complaining and, you know, that sort of thing. Thinking about the negative doesn't keep your vibration high. So can we talk about something else or, you know, anything like that. But for yourself, if you find yourself complaining, just check yourself. Just be like, oh, or listen to your guide going, you're complaining. And then go, oh, yeah, I am complaining. But then don't beat yourself up for it. Just move on. Okay, so declutter, block out distractions, and no more complaining. There we go. Okay, now we're going to get into some tarot here. Let's see what we get for you. Wow, that didn't work at all. <laughs> Even a little bit. <laughs> okay. That one wants to come out. 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 All right, let's see, what do we get here? Three of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles, the Hero Font, Three of Cups, Two of Wands, and Seven of Wands. Okay. So, Three of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles, the Hero Font, and three of cups two of wands and seven of wands okay so we're definitely dealing with a situation where um needing to cooperate and think about and deal with other people was definitely a deal here and things weren't always, you know, easy. Maybe they have health issues. Maybe you've also dealt with health issues. This could even be COVID related. Um, but we are coming out of this tough time. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, again, with this eight of pentacles, I'm, I'm, it's like coming to me like, see, like focus focusing um letting like letting everything else go the hero font coming in after that the three of cups really like an like a whole new like flavor i'm hearing a whole new flavor a whole new energy like really really going into the light um but again needing to be patient they're still patient and they're still healing they're still letting go there's still stuff that's bothering you that you need to release so another thing um i'm being shown and pointed to is cord cutting so if you're not familiar with cord cutting we all have energy cords attached to each other and things. It's just the way we work. It's, um, it's not something we can see, but we can definitely feel it. And we have these energy cords attached to people that, that we were, we, those, those, that, that kind of thing can, can, um, happen very, very quickly. But especially if you're intimate, if you're, if you have a, if you're, if it's a family member, a friend, a, and especially sexual partners, um, have very strong cords with sexual energy. And so what I'm seeing, and as soon as I saw this, um, what I got and what I saw was the, the, the cover of my ebook, the importance of cord cutting. 
And there's also the self-healing guided meditation for taking you through how to cut cords with people. And um, the ebook explains everything. So if you haven't done that yet, please read the ebook. Please check out the, the, the meditation. Even if you have done this before and somebody is coming to you right now that you're thinking of, maybe you need to cut cords again. It's not a one and done thing. Unfortunately, it could be the kind of thing, even if they're not, whether they're in your life and you, it's more of a reset of energies because cutting sounds very permanent and we reestablish cords real quick. Um, and so you could cut cords and they, they come back because that's where they've been. You think about that person. They think about you. You're still in the person's life. I'm getting a really weird sensation here. Um, yeah, definitely want to cut cords. Definitely. And I feel a connection with the third eye with this, with, um, whomever this may be that they're really blocking. Now I'm looking at this, the high priest is talking about our intuition and our psychic abilities, the need to let go. So it feels like this connection or to this person or experience, whatever's coming up for you right now, or when you read the book, or when you think about this more, the person or the situation could be a traumatic experience. It could be a person. It could be a, an abusive relationship. Whatever it is, we really, really need to get past that because it is energetically threatening, period, on in a, in different ways and so for you to be able to really fulfill this get past get past this tough time you need to take charge you need to move in a healthy um direction taking care of yourself energetically um and and cutting cords releasing releasing what was that yeah gear guilt and fear and I'm hearing, don't, don't feel like you're obligated to stay energetically connected. And if this is somebody that's in your life that you feel is very draining, is toxic, is a narcissist, is using you, is manipulating you, or was, or is very, it's, something's very chaotic here. So um, we need to, we need to move past that. Definitely meditation is going to take you there. The seven of wands um, does talk about, um, issues with energy and needing to protect yourself and being kind of under attack. Um, and, but, and here's our three of wands and this is speaking to your guidance. Like you have, your guidance is definitely there. And we have the three of wands and the three of pentacles, one on top of the other. So the three of pentacles right above that three of cups. So, um, I'm kind of like speaking to the, the, who are in your, the physical, who are the factors in the physical? So who are the people in your life that have been connected to some sort of drama, chaos, turmoil issues, just, or it could not, it, it, it could just be you all went like maybe there was a natural disaster and that's been the thing and every it's it's fucked with everybody and everybody is having a hard time and you're kind of the person taking care of everybody but it's 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 too much and we need to to start clearing this out i mean that's just something that came and then here are your your companions in in spirit so they're here and they're guiding you. They want, but you need to do the work. So they're guiding you towards taking inventory, decluttering, taking the time out um, during this time to do this inventory and then moving forward. Now let's not forget we have the hero font here. So we definitely have this like higher awareness coming in and the the need to you know you see the steps there with the hero font we're talking again talking about patience so so yeah so we definitely want to look into clearing out energy decluttering like we heard from the um and no more distractions like we heard from our angels of abundance okay and next we're going to get a um a crystal card
and see what crystal you should be focused like focusing in on hopefully you have this crystal if you don't then maybe it's time to go shopping or at least pull up this crystal online look at the the picture of it read about it just connect with the energy um, until you can get one oh there it is creativity awesome Big Spite, Fire, card number seven, Creativity, and the crystal is, again, it's Big Spite. I love this. Oh, I should have had my... Oh, there's the book. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Creativity. You have attracted this powerful card into your awareness as a sign. It is time to deepen your connection to the creative life force energy of the universe. You are a creative soul and you are being invited to awaken to this passionate fire energy available to you at all times. Don't forget sun, Aries, moon, Aries, fire, fire. Have you been feeling stuck in your life or experiencing a lack of drive and passion? Well, it's time to connect back into your creative flair. It, we are all creative beings. And when we disconnect from this life force energy, it can cause us to feel blocked, stale, and unmotivated. It's time to get your creativity sparked. What do you do that's creative? What sparks your passion? What makes you feel alive? Find out what makes your heart sing and uh sing and action steps to man and take action steps to manifest this magic into your life make sure you call in the sacred fire to assist you with your creative projects and deepen your connection to the life force energy of the universe and big spite this red emerald is one of the rarest crystals on the planet oh okay yeah it is one of the most powerful crystals to enhance and invoke a creative flair at the deepest level big spite aligns you with the life force energy of the universe awakening the fire within ah, okay so i'm not sure i've never heard of it um so I'm actually interested and intrigued to look into it. But so if we can't get it, at least, like I said, at least look it up, tap in with that energy. Um, and it's saying to also to help with this, what I'm hearing to help with clearing blocks, with raising your vibrations, with helping you let go and release guilt and fear is getting into your creativity and just feeling into again, like, um, not again, but I'm, it's pointing me to inner child. So inner child, and I have a meditation for that, healing the inner child and integrating with the inner child will definitely help with your creativity. So there we go with that. Awesome, awesome. And lastly, we are going to get a... Dragon a dragon fate oracle card because again work to connect with our um divine counterparts the dragons are angelic in nature and in their origin i should say and um so i was guided to um for us to be getting i'm working with the dragon so welcoming in the dragons See what we get here. Ah, there it is. Hideki's door. Oh, I love this one. Hideki's door. Card number thirty-three. <laughs> you got two threes, and now we have. Card number 33, you see that 33 there? Hideki's door, card number 33. He's a little wee dragon. 
and knock on the door. Card number 33, Hideki's door. Okay, here we go. <sighs> I, uh, Hideki speaks. I know you wish to reach out and yet you hold back. I know you feel drawn to knock on this door and to see whether it will be answered this time. And yet you fear so much. You fear that it will not be answered, that the answer or the face that appears beyond the door will not be to your liking, that if you enter, you may never return. I cannot put your fears to rest, for only you can do that. But I can tell you what I see. I see a spirit whose flame has flickered low, whose light is in danger of going out if it does not take the next step. For years you have passed this door and many times you have found yourself here. You may have even uh, knocked on the door only to flee like a terrified child before the door was open to you. I say to you now, it is time. Reach out, knock at the door and let what will be, be about Hideki. Hideki is a powerful wee dragon fae who dwells much of the time in the east. With the fear of dragons that was prevalent so much in the west, he stayed away, servicing those who respected what he brought with him. The possibility for new beginnings and a chance taken and delight found. Now that times are changing, at last Hideki can spread his beautiful doorways. Uh, wait, sorry now the times are changing and at last hideki can spread his beautiful doorways between worlds into the west and even beyond these doors are between seasons between worlds between night and day and are of transitions and chances chances he now wishes to bring to you the chance for good fortune brought through brand new opportunities so again we started with a new a tough the end of a tough cycle approaches which always means we have a new beginning starting uh divinatory meetings nervous about a new chance feeling as though your comfort zone is far better than the unknown longing to travel and to change yet unwilling to do anything about it procrastination and old habits keeping you from reaching out and accepting what is being offered you are ready it is simply nerves that are holding you back conditioned fears and internalized voices from the past reach out take a hold of the handle and be ready for the wonder of the unknown that lies beyond the door the doors of perception are about to change forever and working with hideki working with astral travel moving between dimensions dimensions changing jobs careers applying for new positions reaching out for new friendships going out of your comfort zone and ex exploring what lies beyond where you have ever ventured before getting ready for wonderful new opportunities yes tests and challenges but how wondrous adventurous and exciting life is about to become you have nothing to fear except fear freezing your hand again. This time, knock on the door. Hideki will be with you and knows that you are about to enter a magical realm, utterly different to what you have been told and how you have imagined it to be. This is real magic. Oh, goodness gracious. This is exciting. Again, let me show you Hideki. and encouraging you to move forward knock on the door let go of fear so this thing with fear and letting go of fear following your guidance definitely big time here and the fact that things are changing um and i'm really hearing this like in order for this tough period to end in order for you to, to have this moving on thing it really is it really takes you being very conscious about it doing very specific connecting clearing astral work doing the meditation like whether if you don't do the meditations that i mean you're here you've been guided so it makes sense you're guided here for a reason i have these meditations 
set up, ready to go. So why not do them? And I really feel that that it's like, that's what it's pointing me to. Like you have to take these steps to cut cords, to connect with your, um, another one of the meditations that I, that I put out at the same time was, um, uh, body love. So connecting with your body and, uh, meeting your guardian angel. So even if you have already established a relationship or whatever, you could still do that meditation. So a lot of meditations came up for you today <laughs> to, to get into, but this is how we clear energy. This is how we connect. This is how we move through um, into astral travel. This is how we connect with our mother earth Gaia. Since she is the one really coming through these meditations, like I say, they're channeled as guided astral meditations. Um, very powerful, very intense, but really awesome. So I really encourage you to check those out. Again, I was shown this picture here. So that really is a theme. You really, really need to do energy work, do clearing work, declutter your home. It's all about letting go of old energy and allowing, whoa, allowing for the new energy to come into you so you can be guided on your way. Again, I just saw this picture in my head. So this is waiting for you. This is where you need to go. Um, I've given you the tools and how to do that aside from lis listening to uh, 396. Um, call in Arch call in any Archangel, but call in Archangel Haniel. She will help you have more patience with yourself. Um, Hideki will help you when you're fearful of the unknown, of where these meditations may take you or any energy healing. And I do offer really awesome, intense energy healing that will cut a lot of fast off, really boost your, your energy up. So check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org for all of that, all the meditations also on my, they're on my YouTube as well. The eBooks are in the shop on my website. And I guess we're done here. So with that said, I wish you a beautiful new moon and the end of your Stargate and the rest of April. I hope that this helps. And um, if it resonates with you, please um, give this a like, subscribe if you haven't yet, and leave a comment. I wanna know uh, what you think about uh, this guidance for you for the new moon. And with that said, infinite love and blessings. I'll see you later. Bye for now. Hey there, number twos. Here we go. Oh, that didn't take very long. <laughs> what do you need to release? Oh, we have a question here with the waning mood. What do we need to release is our first card here with our moonology asking you a question. What do you need to release? Okie dokie. Next, we're going to get into the Archangel um, portion of the Major Arcana for the Angel Oracle, or sorry, the Angel Tarot. <laughs> this is the, uh, just the Major Arcana. Uh, and we're going to hear from one Archangel here. This is sort of similar to the last one in a sense, but there's a quite, yeah, there's a question here for sure. What do you need to release? There's something, oh, something, something, something. Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> I can't make this up. We got the release card with Azriel. The end of a phase or a situation, spiritual transformation, a time to move on. You know, it's so funny. Remember how I said this is similar to the last one? Well, our last first, the last, the first read, our moonology said the, uh, the end of a tough situation approaches. And it was like, Okay, and then it came, went, got into this whole, like, there's stuff that needs to be released, fears that need to be looked at, stuff like that. So check out that one. <laughs> Here we have 
very specifically release coming out in the first two cards here. Again, can't make this up. What do you need to release and release? So. <laughs> Again, can't cannot make this up. Um I want to get into the Angels of Abundance first. <laughs> really interested to see what we get here um but i definitely feel that there is some big situation something that really kind of flipped things like really i just flip things over like 180 kind of thing in your brain in your world in your universe and it was it, it was like a chain reaction kind of thing caused a lot of turmoil um but it is this is ending this ha either is ending has ended is in the process of ending it's there's our first card I shit you not. I can't. I wish. <laughs> Release jealousy. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> I'm just like. <clears throat> Rele <clears throat> what do you need to release? Release. And release jealousy. Jealousy is an aff affirmation that you don't have something. And the universe manifests exactly as you affirm. Let other people's successes inspire rather than frustrate you. If they have it, so can you. Absolutely. friggin lutely Release gel. I, okay, let's just, I'm sorry. We got to do this because look at all the release business here. <laughs> what you need to release? Release. Release jealousy. So here it's little, it's, it's, Asking and answering the question for you in the first three cards. We can be done here. We're done. <laughs> We're done. Release jealousy is what's coming up. So there's something here about a situation with je jealousy, um, being frustrated that something happened with you, something is happening with other people possibly, because I don't feel like this is... necessarily a situation well we'll see more but i don't think so i don't think this is about being jealous of somebody maybe being frustrated that there's a there might be a certain somebody that really triggers you okay next two next two cards god is your source God is your source. I like to say mother, father, God. So we're honoring both the divine masculine and the divine feminine because there isn't just the one. Okay. So I like to say mother, father, God. Everything you need is supplied by the infinite source of mother, father, God. And your faith opens the doorway to receive in mother father god there is no lack or limitation rather there is plenty of abundance for all to share so really similar here if they have it so can you um having faith like i'm kind of hearing like this like if the bottom fell out or things totally flipped once and everything that I worked for built up, you know, came crashing down or, you know, and that could, this could be COVID related. Um, very quite possibly, or a chain reaction of, you know, how things, what happened with many people and their livelihoods, their jobs, their relationships with, with with that um the next one is attracting not chasing 
Anything or anyone you chase after will run the other way because of the fears underlying chasing energy. Instead, attract what you need by sending out love, gratitude, and welcoming energy. Okay, so there's that. That's very similar. These two cards here. Anything or anyone you chase after. So it's kind of similar to this jealousy thing here. That there is a somebody, a some a something involved with the somebody. It could be there is some partnership that maybe not everything was fair. It could be that, or you don't perceive that it was all fair. It could also be that, um, dang it. I put my plant too close to the candle and I meant to move her and I didn't. One leaf got messed up. Sorry about that. Um, supposed to be right there. Okay. Sorry. Uh, this could also be, I'm feeling that there is a, for some of you, a person that there was jealousy or um, something, something, something with a specific person. So this could for some of you be attached to a specific person and you not getting everything that you that you wanted from that person or it didn't feel fair it wasn't didn't feel balanced or something like that or you felt like all of a sudden it changed or maybe they were gone it could be that you put a lot of energy into some project with somebody and or a lot of energy into somebody and it didn't work out and you're not letting go yeah Definitely that could be the case here. So it could be a, a business that, that you had to stop or it got shut down or whatever because of the pandemic or, you know, other reasons affecting that situation. Um, and this could be a person, a relationship, whether it was a partnership, a business partnership, a friendship, some other type of relationship, and it did not work out. And you're not letting go because release came up three times first three cards and it's saying you really do need to move on a time literally a time to move on so whatever this was this person this situation this business you're like pining over upset about still thinking about angry at frustrated let's see what our tarot says <laughs> whoa two of swords in reverse the sun in reverse. Interesting. We'll see if they stay in reverse. Ten of cups, right up, right side, right, <laughs> right up. King of cups. Knight of cups. Look at all these cups in reverse. And eight of swords. Oh boy. Right side up. Okay. So. <laughs> This is pretty straightforward. Um, this two of swords is saying that you know that things are done, they're over, but energetically, you're still really trapped in this energy that even like your guides, your guardians are trying to pull you away from, but you just cannot, you, you're stuck. <laughs> you're, you're really stuck here. It's like I'm seeing like you're trying to drive up a hill and you're like, oh, get me out of here. And the parking brake is on. And it's like release, release the parking brake and zoom, there, there you go. Because look at what we have next. The sun. 
So it's like, instead of focusing on this thing that didn't work out and be and put literally like I'm seeing being, I'm being shown this like obsession about it, about the person, about the situation, the partnership, the business, whatever, or whomever it is. And it could be both that it's about this need to release the parking brake need. You need to leave that because it is over it's time to move on and your connection to it your energy into it still is causing you to stay where you're at and this new moon is a perfect time for you to do just that and move on because the energy that's waiting for you and, and you you can't see this they're saying you cannot see this because it's over that hill but the energy waiting for you is this ton of cups and that is very abundant it's very happy it's it's partnerships it's family it's love it's all that good stuff um and and there is a definite like there is either um a person, a mentor, a coach, a, a sh like a shaman, a healer like me, somebody that you can look to, watch their videos, listen to their, their videos, their podcasts and stuff like this. Of course, I'm going to advise my own stuff <laughs> because you're here. So that makes sense, right? Um, and very similar to the last reading, I am being shown um, definitely my ebook on cord cutting, the importance of cord cutting, something for you to look at. If you've already looked at it, if you've already downloaded it, because you're not new here, read it again. You need a refresher because, or, and if you're like, I already cut cords with that person. Well, clearly you didn't. Clearly it didn't take. Clearly you got to do it again. And sometimes we need to do these things over again. And I'm even seeing that you are even, this is even a, an issue in sleep time. That it's hard to sleep or you're dreaming about this stuff. And that says that it's really deep energy. That it's, that you're not doing the normal process that you need to do when you go to sleep. Which is leave the body, raise in dimensions and connect with your soul, with your guides and do all sorts of work. You're not doing that. Um, and that's why this release is coming in. So this is making you tired. It's making you anxious. It's stressing you out. You've got headaches, your joints hurt. Like you're feeling like literally like shit. So, but it's saying that's just all this energy that needs to be released. This is it. This sun card is in reverse here. So what that's saying is that your need to to do this releasement of energy will let this explode. And I'm really feeling this in this solar plexus. Like this is big time with like your, um, your balance, your, your, your will, your authenticity. Like you just got, like I said, from the very beginning, I feel this flip, this like, whoa, like everything just flipped. Like it was this and then it was this, or you thought it was this and then it was this, something like that. And it really messed you up and you have been holding on to that, trying to figure it out. But you're also, I see like you decided to at the same time, for maybe if not all of you, but for some of you decided to like turn, turn away from the source, turn away from the person, not pursue more information not not no communication i'm hearing no communication which it's like things ended abruptly and if this was a person ended abruptly and um not you know just a lot of questions there and and it's like I didn't get everything I needed to get from this. I expected more. What with this, you know, what happened? Like I had plans and I thought this was gonna go down and you know, that kind of stuff. And when it didn't, when something changed, um, it was kind of also saying like from the beginning you were not seeing the total picture. So you weren't not to place blame or judgment, but it was like it wasn't a balanced, I'm seeing, I'm hearing, I'm feeling. It was not balanced. 
So it's really important to cut cords. It's really important to do whatever kind of energy healing that you are being guided to do. Um, and I'm also feeling like maybe you don't fully understand what it's like to what it means to be an empath and a lot of empaths don't fully understand it it's very ambiguous and it's and for a lot of people who have a lot of negative energy still in their system it's like driving it's like it's like operating a a vehicle with a dirty windshield and not understanding the levers or the any anything anything so it's really hard to um, move forward, understand where you're at and understand how you feel and understand all this stuff. So anyway, I, I feel like I'm really speaking to empaths here. Um, I usually do. They're the empath light workers. People like that are usually who, who comes into my world and, um, but the need to understand that more, or if this is something new to you, but it's, it's resonating you're going oh this feels like something here uh, please check out my my ebook the essential empath guide it's free all my ebook the ebooks that i have on there now are all free um what is psychic attack and how to eliminate negative energy the essential empath guide the spiritual war the light and the dark and your energy and how that plays it how all of that is connected and um what is the other one? Um, I'm spacing right now. But anyway, those are the ones that are coming up for you to take a look at um, for sure. And in that empath guide, the very beginning, there is a quiz. So I highly recommend you take a look at that. Um, and there really is a need for you to, we have Knight of Cups and King of Cups, but look at this. They are looking showed up like this king of cups first he's right side up king uh, or knight of cups flipped over here and take a look at this picture with the knight of cups so what i see here is with this knight of cups reversed the sun reversed the two swords reversed it's like yeah not seeing the full picture not letting go um you have two of the, you have this eight of swords like this, and you have the two of swords. Very similar energies here, being tied up, being stuck. Um, however, one of the progression here, because there's definitely a progression, two of swords, and, and two of swords mean it's like, it's two swords like this like like they can't one can't move the, they can't move because they're they're in comp they're they're stuck and then you have these other cards here the sun in reverse ten of cups king of cups knight of cups and then you have eight of swords but right side up so it showed so what i hear here is like you you're like okay i get it but you're still like in the process of doing it so with this with this new moon i would say what really needs to happen is just you doing some inventory you deciding that you want to get into this new um space here because the cups represent emotion represent connections and all of that the swords are all about um uh, thoughts and thinking and ideas and all of this so these two things need to come together your emotions and your thoughts need to be in balance so you're not trapped anymore so there's this like definite sense of being trapped but it's right side up so it's like this is what's going on underneath and this is you thinking what do I need to do to get past this so hopefully that makes sense to you um let me move that out of the way we are going to get into now the um let's see what frequency cards this is the uh um i forgot the name of it sacred geometry oracle and i just pulled out the frequency cards because i wanted to see what for these readings what are we guided to what frequency are we guided to 
um, to help us going forward. So let me pick a card here. Here we go. Uh, so card number 31, frequency 963, true state of being true state of being so this card with um god is your source release we had release 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 the true state of being um i'm just i'm feeling with this that it's like this particular situation, all whatever that it is again, whatever that it is, really triggered like it was this chain reaction. And it really made you go, huh, maybe I'm not as um like stable in my frequency or my spirituality. Um because your state of being got disrupted, right? And so it's like, not only did it get disrupted, it because it got disrupted, that in in itself was disrupting. Because you're like, what happened? Like, how am I? How did this happen? How do I feel this way? Um, how is it I can't let go? I thought I was more healed or more put together so that's also been a, an issue for you too this like what the heck is going on how how i thought that i thought that i was like um like it really made you question your your uh your connection, your stability, your understanding, your state of being exactly like it says, like it really kind of like that solar plexus again, when that gets disrupted, everything gets disrupted. Um, so definitely 963 would be what to listen to, what to have on. Um, and for your crystal, it, your card um, or your crystal, this is the crystal oracle, my goodness, can't speak, going within, that makes sense, inner world, uh, Boji stones, card number 13, going within, yeah, that makes perfect sense, we just got this true state of being, got going within, with, sorry, it's so bright right there. But it's really awesome because we got these boji stones and then the the path into the tree. Very cool. Um, let me just read about this. Card number 13. Okay, going within. This card and medicine have come through for you today as a message that it's time to focus your attention and energy inward to go within and discover the answers to your current questions. In truth, everything we need is already with us. And when we can take the time to stop and be still and journey within, we are blessed with a deep knowing and self-awareness. Over the years, humanity has created a world with an abundance of energy and experiences outside of ourselves, which can be a huge dist distraction when trying to connect to the guidance and support that is alive within us. Have you been looking for the answers outside of yourself? Have you been distracted by outside influences? Are you experiencing a lack of clarity in your life and feeling overwhelmed and confused? Are you pondering a question and are not sure of the answer? Well, it's time to go within and find your guidance. You are being called to drop into the deep space within yourself to receive the clarity and answers to your questions. It is a powerful time of journey to the inner realms to revive your medicine, a time to follow the beat of your drum. From this place, profound connection will awake and awakening will occur. Uh, <clears throat> 
So Boji stones assist in going within. They provide medicine to journey to the inner world of shamanism. They are also related to balance. So Boji, B-O-J-I, Boji stones. Um, so going within, very on point here because to release 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 you need to and to connect with mother father god and gaia you need to go within you need to meditate you need to get into this state so you're that's what you're being told to do with with this ten of cups is also telling me we need a lot of water energy to help you through this fiery energy that is held on to you and we are in fire season with the aries in in this the sun in aries and the moon in aries um so we have the sun right here so and of course i mean that's a great card the fact that it's in reverse and again i'm seeing that like just release the parking brake because <laughs> it's so funny that it's like that's what I think of because that's exactly like, I think it's even, that's the word that's used usually for the parking brake is release it, um, is release the parking brake. And so again, that's coming up. We need to go within, we need to release energies. We need to really dig deep. And I'm feeling what I'm hearing here is like this, with this picture here with going within, it's like, there's deeper stuff there. This whole thing with the situation and this person or the person and the situation, if it has to do with a business or um, something else than just a relationship, but it also could just be a friendship, a relationship, a partnership, not necessarily it being connected to more, but I kind of feel that it, that it, that for some people it is either way. <laughs> um, that it's connected to like past life stuff, karmic stuff, then that's why it's so triggering. It's so hard to let go. You're like, what is wrong with me? Why can't I let this go? Why is it so hard for me to let this go, to release this? And it's like, and that's why it's kind of shaking you up because you're like, I'm, I've been really good at letting stuff go. And just like, if a, if a situation, a relationship, a partnership doesn't work out, you know, whatever, you know, this has happened, but this time around, it's like, it's very unexpected. And I, again, I, I think it's because you, you didn't see all of it. It wasn't in balance. Something was off about it. If it was a business, maybe it was so consuming that once it was gone, it was like, it was like, what, <laughs> what am I doing now? If it was a person, you put a lot of energy into thinking about, um, or having a certain set of expectations or not seeing everything about the situation. Some, there's something about that. So we need to go within to get that, to, to really, start getting um, information that is not just about this lifetime, this experience, but about what else it's connected to for you, literally in your very cells, in your DNA, connected with your soul, that is an imprint that triggers from it's like from the past coming in triggering it's just like the way that it works within our lives we had an experience when we were 15 then we have the a very similar experience when we're 20 and it reminds us it triggers us to remember like boom like what happened when we were 15 and bring up all those experiences the same way it happens when it's a past life thing except for because it's so deeply buried and it doesn't reside in this dimension it makes it hard to see it and hard to feel it but in our world we feel very triggered very intensely and it's like what is that and so i would say definitely um going into 
and 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 it, however you may be guided if this is resonating with you to work with somebody um with past lives work i, mean, I do that as well so however you're guided to to get into that okay and our our last card is um, from the Dragon Fate Oracle. It's Shumara. It's Web of All Life. As I'm talking about um, Akashic Records and past lives, this is card number 35. Um, Shumara is about the Web of All Life. Oh my gosh, I love her so much. I love this. This is one of my favorite favorite cards of this deck truly truly i swear to you it is um shumara web of all life and also i read recently and i didn't have time to get into it but but i read from somebody that they were like the energy of this new moon um comes with spider with spider energy because of that that universal web of all life thing and then i just get web of all life so there's definitely something there okay web of all life shumara speaks beyond the mask we all wear of identity beyond the construct of who we have been conditioned to believe we are lies your face yourself this face is tender and new in so many ways as you have not shown her to the world before this face has been protected because the world has seemed to have has seemed and proved indeed at times to be a dangerous and unkind place where those of us who feel different are proved to be so as we brave the taunts and finger pointing but i now tell you that your protections your armor your shield can be removed safely with me do not discard her as you may need her yet in certain situations, but know now she is your armor and her role is to protect your true being. To you, I now reveal myself. See, many people have recoiled in horror at who I truly am. I am a dragon fey maiden, a spider woman, a being of webs and change and destruction and recreation. Each day I must remake my world. I feel along its sensory th threads to see what needs reconstruction and what needs to be let go of. For I am as you are part of this new web of life, a web of life that embraces our differences and yet understands that we are one. I ask you today to look at the webs of your life that must be remade, remade and rewoven. Okay. And we're, I'm going to, I'm going to go down here. I'm not going to read all of this because it's kind of long. So I'm going to go right down to working with Shumara. Gently revealing who you are in safe environments. Exploring more about galactic consciousness. Understanding your own personal cultural history. Bloodline vibrations and exploring your ancestry. Being honest in situations where previously you may have kept silent. Refusing to engage in falsehood for false peace. Being who you are becoming more sensitive to vibrational communication and higher vibrational living, creating a new family based on values and beliefs that are sacred to you, being in integrity with your beliefs, understanding your true self is beautiful, powerful, and loving, activating the web in your life, working with the powers of the four directions, being open to the concept of communicating with beings from beyond our solar system. Okay, so... Truly, um, the web of all life and Shumara coming through to say, if you, if you decide and when you decide to go on this journey, to dig deep, to connect with the web in your life, to connect, you know, like I, the way that I see it energetically is like, oh, there's a knot here. So I'm going to take this knot, this, I'm going to take this knot and unravel it and pull on the thread and see where it leads to. And, and that's really what you're being asked to do. You got the web of all life. You've got going within. And she talks about this. You need to go within. It's time to connect with you, the essence of you. And that is being blocked right now with whatever this happened with this situation. But at the same time, 
there's once this takes place once this big shift in energy for you and it won't go back to the way it was it's going to be new because it's going to be you improved really and connecting to mother father god to gaia to your guardian angels to um the archangels to the dragons to everything that that is within you that you can connect to and again i highly recommend you checking out my um my meditations because that will help you this is definitely a clear a clear sign that releasement needs to take place energy healing clearing of your of your energy releasing this situation is i mean release we got three releases three cards out and everything else is supporting that wanting you to take the next steps but telling you we need to release first what what is holding you back take a take a real honest look at it without judgment that's like be patient and without judgment of this situation of your role in it just see it from a from an outsider's type kind of perspective and so kind of raise if you're like first person raise your awareness and your perspective up so you can satellite out and see it from a higher perspective in what in as much as you possibly can write it out write out the situation tell the story um, I'm feeling that that would really, really, really help you to do that before cutting cords is to write out the story, whether that's, you know, writing it out with a pen or a pencil or typing it up, just write it out. Um, and no, nobody but you is going to read it. So be as honest and exactly how you feel. Don't hold back at all and see what is revealed there. I think that will really, really help you. And that'll get the ball rolling for releasing. Then again, tap in with Azriel. Um, have him help you with this releasement. Um, again, it is the end. Like, it's time to move on. It is the end. Or it was the end, but you're still dealing with the the shock waves of it the connection of it the turmoil of it the chaos of it the actions and the things that happened all connected to it words that were said things that were done or not done like how quickly things may have changed from what you thought it was going to be to what it was and then what it became and um and you're really wrapped up in it um and still but we need to remember this came out in reverse or two of swords really really saying it's like like you can't like you just haven't been able to see the way out and so um the way out is to know that um well number one there it's more comp whatever it is it's more complex than what we can see and you're trying to figure out all of the ins and outs of it is you know where i'm here like where did it go wrong what should i have done what was this what was that it's like i feel like on in, on one level you know exactly on the other level there's still a big mystery there <laughs> it's really interesting but no matter what it is that you have to reconcile with you're not going to have all the answers you're just not because that's just the nature of the situation. You can't see everything about it. You can only handle and deal with your, your attachment to it, how you feel about it, your perception of it, your frequency, your energy, what's connected to it. Again, the web of all life, what it's all connected to. And again, how there very well could be more here to it than just this. So check yourself on that. Ask for your ask your guidance. Is this a past life thing? Is this an Akashic race? Should I really think about that? Not that it's all this or it's all that, but it's connected. 
Okay, I think we've done everything here. Um, my beautiful number two. I want to thank you for joining me here for this reading. Please check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org, for my meditations, those ebooks for you to check out. They're all free. Um, and definitely my offerings and see if there's something there that I can work with you one on one with ascension coaching and clearing energy, releasing energy, healing energy, the physical body, emotional body spiritual body all of that stuff is what i work with so i would love to um, help you out if you're so guided so please reach out if that's the case other than that i hope you have a beautiful rest of april and a beautiful renewing releasing new moon infinite love and blessings bye for now Hey there, number threes. Thank you so much for joining me for your new moon reading. I'm really excited to get into this. We've had a couple of really cool readings so far for our number one and our number two. So here we are with three. Let's get into it, starting with moonology. Moonology, oh, here we go. Feeling that one. Balance, spirituality, and practicality. Full moon in Pisces. That's where we're at to start. Balance, spirituality, and practicality. Interesting. Let's see what else we get here with this Pisces um, full moon card. Balance, spirituality, whoop, okay, there's our card. Pulling from the uh, Archangel Major Arcana from the Angel Tarot, so it's, I just used that section of the, the tarot to pull out the, um, the card, wow. So we have reading number three, we have balance, spirit, spirituality, and practicality, and we got card number three of our Major Arcana the empress archangel gabriel lavish abundance give birth to your dreams nurture yourself and others awesome awesome i absolutely love this card so much um so the empress energy with balance spirituality and practicality very interesting here okay um I'm honestly feeling this thing with this balanced spiritual spirituality and practicality and the Empress. I just get this sense of, of this like other person coming in and that's the balance like that. You're the spirituality and then the practicality will come in. Like I'm more talking to whether you're, whether you're a, a man or a fe or a woman, this is that it's this is more divine feminine centric, and that we're looking at more of a divine masculine balancing things out. Or if you already have one, then um, to seek them out for for balance. But let's see what else we get here. But because this is really interesting what I'm getting here with this. That it's not and it's different from what I usually get with this card, balance spirituality and practicality. I very much see that as the self. But here I'm seeing that like you're the divine feminine. And or your divine feminine aspect, the aspect of of spirituality of the divine feminine of being nurturing you know that whole divine feminine side no matter who you are you know sex wise um wow it's like the fourth time i've seen this card today um wow okay so that we're that we're looking at this like split because if you see the see the pisces see the two fish so it's like that's it's very much 
in alignment with this balancing energy that needs to take place. And instead of saying balancing masculine and feminine energy, it's saying balance spirituality and practicality. So this is the card that's coming out for that. Second card coming out is the Empress, which is, you know, which is like the mother, the mother um card, the that archetype that is nurturing. As you can see, she's literally holding a baby there. A lot of times the Empress is shown pregnant, but because she's an archangel, they show you her holding a baby instead of being pregnant. Uh, but let's see what our uh Angels of Abundance cards say that I just pulled out. Positivity, faith, and optimism. First card out. I love this. Uh, you open the doorway to positive experiences and opportunities with your positive expectations and energy. Do not allow negative energy or temporary setbacks to interfere with the push Oh, sorry, with the path that you are on. Keep the faith and keep going. So leaning into those, um, that faith energy that's not logical, it's faithful. It's that, again, that intuitive, spiritual side that says everything will be fine. I'm protected. I'm connected. Don't worry. Don't have anxiety. Don't stress. Don't be like, oh, I hope this works out. I hope that doesn't go wrong. I hope, like, don't think all these negative things because that's, exactly the the thing that tends to happen when we think negatively when we when we are focused on that our energy flows where our energy is centered so if our energy is centered in anxiety and stress and things not working out then you're going to experience that so to so when you're positive when you're faithful when you're optimistic when you go my expectations are this is going to be awesome then guess what? It's going to be awesome no matter what because you've decided it's going to be awesome. Like I'm doing this with like that pan kind of energy. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We're going to have a good time here. Like everything's going to be great instead of, oh, I hope that I can trust them. I hope it works out. I hope that they're, they're um, you know, worthy of my affection, attention, love, this kind of thing. Okay. Next is declutter. This is that card I was like, wow, this is like the fourth time I've seen this today. This came up in um, two readings so far, and um, I think, and like I f fell out earlier. So you'll feel better and more focused if you'll take the time to clear away clutter from your living and workspace. Donate what you can to help others who may need your items. Be sure to keep your schedule uncluttered as well. I love that part. <laughs> um, so there's um well i feel like you know everybody everybody can declutter on some level so take a look around when it what i suggested for when this came up before in one of the other readings was just take inventory of your of your workspace of your home space look at what doesn't that doesn't connect with you anymore it's there you're it's attached to you but would you be really upset if it was gone would you notice would how would that feel does it feel good to think about it being someplace else and having that space empty and vacant for something else um so and i think kind of in general this is also saying um, there's busyness that there's like energy that could be pared down. Um, what can you eliminate of your output of energy right now or the rest of the month or whatever. What, I mean, there's, it feels like there's just kind of like too much of something too much. Okay. I I'll get back to that. Cause there's something that I'm not sure what clean energy food to even show you this card. I'm so sorry. I've been really bad about <laughs> showing cards today. Um, clean energy food. 
So when you fuel your body with, with a healthful organic diet, you increase your energy levels and ability to focus. This automatically leads to more efficiency, better ideas, and a higher vibration, which attracts golden opportunities and beneficial relationships. So really think about the energy that is going into your body. What is the protein fueling you? And where does that come from? What is connected to it? Without getting into a whole thing, if you're a meat eater, please consider the energy within the animal um, that you're consuming. Because every piece of meat that you eat has energy connected to it that's connected to an animal that was killed for its to be consumed and that energy that fear the sadness the shortened lifespan everything that 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 animal experienced it's it's locked in to the flesh that you eat and when you break that up into many different animals that's going to be a problem for a lot of people who are really sensitive and this is why people who um spiritually awaken and energy and get higher vibrational and clean and all of that they are all vegans or at least vegetarians because the animal protein in their body is so out of alignment with their frequency raising that it makes them feel that just the thought of it or if they were to eat any meat I know for myself, I can't imagine what it would do to my system if I had any meat because I haven't for so long, but just the nature of the energy attached to it. And we tend to get more sensitive as we raise our vibration. We tend to get more and more sensitive to the vibration of of food that we put in our body. Even for those that don't raise in vibration or just super, super sensitive that, you know, they're just kind of sick all the time because the energy uh, connected to the food that they eat isn't clean. And so they eat that food and it could be a banana. It doesn't have to be bad for you food that's lower in vibe, that, that's like that. I mean, it, not everybody's that sensitive, but I do have a client who um, she really has to be, you know, clear, very energetic, energetically clear all her food. She definitely doesn't eat meat anymore. She grows her own food. She prepared when she prepares it. She's learned how to manage the energy going into her body. So it always feels good. So it's not like, oh, am I going to feel sick? Am I going to get nauseous? Am I actually going to throw up? You know, these kind of things like it could be that severe. And it's just and, and when I say just energy, it means that, um, that there's nothing like there's no like poison or you know bad bacteria or anything that's may actually making you sick on that kind of physical level it's energy that's doing it now i'm going to do a whole video about this so i'm not getting too much into it but i was just guided to kind of get into it but in general think about the food that you eat how alive is it so like compare um, a piece of bread to a, a slice of apple and the difference in energy between them. I'm not saying don't eat bread. I love bread. But also think about the high vibrational aspects of the food that you're consuming. Declutter, positivity, faith, and optimism is what you got for the angels of abundance. Okay, let's get into the sacred geometry cards. And I just pulled out the frequency cards because that's what I was guided to do. We're just going to... Um, work with getting a frequency card here of um, and some guidance on what frequency you should be um, connecting to and listening to for this new moon and beyond so liberate guilt and fear card number 396 uh, also second time I'm seeing this card so definitely have something here with this liberate guilt and fear and right off the bat I'm gonna say if you have not yet done my meditation on releasing fear guilt shame um, associated to money love and worthiness like it's a awesome channeled guided astral meditation that I facilitated in February so I'm seeing that again, been pointed to that a few times here already. Um, 
liberate guilt and fear. So I'm really feeling like this is this thing with guilt. It's kind of like, what didn't work out in the past? What did you take on? What, who, who do you need to make amends to say you're sorry to, even if it was, even if it's just a general thing, like, I'm sorry if you ever felt I wasn't there for you sort of thing. If there's somebody that comes up and you kind of have that and it's just to, just to clear energy, just to acknowledge, Hey, I'm not perfect. Not everything I did was perfect. I can't go back and change that, but I want to acknowledge that I, I know that I didn't do everything perfectly and that I, I am sorry that I wasn't always there for you or that I, you were hurt in any way by me, you know, something like that, that it doesn't have to be like, I'm sorry I did that one specific thing. Like, you know, like, I don't think it's that. I think it's, it's kind of like, think of the people in your life that if that there's any kind of dissonance with whatsoever and just what's your part to play in that and how can you release this this and if it doesn't work to physically say it to this person or people write it out do a little um ceremony writing it out dear so and so i'm writing you this letter and i not going to ever give it to you, but I'm doing this for the both of us so we can energetically feel this. I'm acknowledging our, our relationship, what, how, you know, whatever comes out, it doesn't have to be anything specific in any way. Just let it flow. Okay. Uh, next we're going to get into the tarot. We're going to get into the tarot. Let's do it. Let's get into our tarot. Let's see what we get here because... I'm feeling there's just so much here, <laughs> so much here. Let's take those two cards. Let's take this card. Let's take that card. Let's, whoa, this card and this card. Okay, we got seven of swords, five of pentacles, ace of pentacles, three of pentacles, knight of pentacles. Holy moly, I got so much pentacles here. A lot of abundance. A lot of, uh, uh, let's see here, Knight of Sword, Knight of Cups coming up in reverse. Are we staying that way? No, we're going right side up here with that Knight. Very cool. So let me show you these cards. Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords. Five of Pentacles. Ace of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles, uh, Knight of Pentacles, and Knight of Cups. So remember how I spoke to you about the Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine, and these energies needing to be balanced out? Well, we got the Empress with, um, with that number three card with Archangel Gabriel saying, Lavish abundance, give birth to your dreams, nurture yourself and others. And here we have all of these pentacles, but we also have these two knights. So what I'm seeing here, for those of you that are singles, those of you that are open or looking on some level, wanting some soul connection, some love thing going on, that balance with the masculine and the feminine. So if we're looking outside of ourselves, I definitely see this, this guy coming or this, you know, person, whether, you know, however you identify and whether this would be a female for you, that's more of a, you know, the divine masculine and you're the divine feminine, no matter what sex you are, I definitely see this energy coming. I see it being very um, cooperative, very much um, in balance here that you guys can, you know, help each other with the practical stuff, help each other with the spiritual stuff, really bring out your, um, your inner child, that divine inner child together. Um... And for those of you who are already in a relationship, I feel like there's, there may be kind of a, 
going in different directions kind of thing. Kind of being in the same general area with stuff but kind of going and in, in doing a little doing kind of been doing things on your own um and maybe there's just like okay like together but separate and there needs to be some type of decision here. Like, are are you guys together? <laughs> are you guys not together? How intimate is this relationship? Um, because it does feel that there's this kind of separateness thing going on. Like, one person is really going within, really tapping in, really meditating, doing like that sort of thing. And somebody else is more like active and out. Like, again, this is divine feminine, divine masculine energies I'm really feeling here. But this coming together, there is this coming together. So I think there's just a new phase starting here and we need to balance this out. Like, like not all, not one person can always be the all of this. And not one person can always be the all of that. Even though we have our roles and we kind of gravitate towards stuff, like maybe it's time to kind of sit down and come together and be like, okay, how are we? What, how you been feeling? How are you feeling? Are you doing what you want to do? Do you need, do we need to ship some things around here? Because there needs, there definitely needs to be better balance as far as, the divine feminine, divine masculine, the logical, the practical, and the spiritual, the the otherworldly type of energies going on. Um, but that we definitely have, it's, whatever it is, it's going to get better. That's what I see here. And especially if you're positive about this and if you're just like, yeah, we change and everything changes. And, and as long as that other person is into changing things up as well because i feel like we're in a need to evolve here we're in a need to evolve the situation if you're with somebody now again if you're not if you're a single person just know that your your inner work is definitely going to and releasing this energy with releasing whatever energy this is about um this guilt and fear uh will definitely help open up the door for this new person to come in because there is definitely this uh this divine masculine energy and he's gonna be balanced in all the right ways that you would hope for which is great <laughs> like true divine masculine energy we have this real nice balance here with the pentacles this earthly and this earthy um energy and this water energy with the cups here really really nice energy i like it a lot and i'm feeling pisces energy with it um for sure so maybe we're looking at a pisces but it doesn't have to be um they are gonna be clear in their energy they're gonna be um uncluttered <laughs> They're going to be uncluttered. This person is going to be uncluttered. And um, they're going to help you too. You're going to help each other. Going to help each other. Most definitely. Okay. Let's see what um, crystal card we're going to get. Crystal oracle card. Let's see that. But there's definitely the need to balance and they, that that's coming. That you need to, once you declutter, once you cut cords with anybody who you feel should, you know, are still, whoa, have, are still sticking energetically, that are still um, influencing your energy in some way it's so that definitely needs to happen there definitely needs to be an inventory on your own of who has negative energy or who where what's something that's connected to you or people are connected to you, whatever it's still connected 
that needs to be cut, that needs to be cleared, that needs to be released. In whatever ways you're guided to do it, we're usually guided towards cutting cords, doing that cut cord cutting thing. So I have my ebook on cord cutting on my website with the companion meditations. I highly suggest that you look into that. And our card here is intention with pyrite and also the symbol is staff card number 18 intention intention is a huge part of of balancing out our energy of connecting spiritually all of that stuff of healing ourselves intention is at the heart of all of that and we have pirate oh my gosh i love pirate so much okay 18 here we go intention <coughs> oops <coughs> okay you have called this card into your awareness to highlight the powerful energy of intention you are the creator of your own world and destiny and can manifest your thoughts and heart's desire by but desires by working with the power of intention by setting an intention you are planting a seed and creating a foundation for energy for this intention to ground and manifest into your life without intention there would be nowhere for the creative energy to attach and move into form have you been feeling a little off track and unsure of your intention is your energy scattered and your concentration on tasks lacking has your mind been focused on intentions that you may not like to create whatever it is for you know that currently it's important to become aware of your intentions the answer to your prayers right now is hidden in your intentions take some time to find clarity around your intentions and then dig deep to see if your current intentions have been aligning with your higher truths intention is the blueprint blueprint for the energy to align itself before it can be manifested if the intention is not clear then the manifestation can be disrupted and not expressed into its pure form make sure your intentions align with the truth of your heart's desires and you will find yourself in the flow of things and things will come to you without effort. Your intentions create your reality. So choose wisely. Okay. Um, and pyrite helps to slow down the mind. It focuses the mind in the present. And it assists in manifesting intentions. Okay. So, and it says, um, and, it, and I'm being guided to read this part too on, on the staff. Because there's a staff. It's a staff and pyrite. So there's always like two things here. So the staff, so they literally made a staff with pyrite. <laughs> um, the staff or rod is mentioned several times in the Bible and it is said to be the hand of God. Moses used the staff to part the Red Sea. It is a sacred tool of medicine people and would usually be constructed from a branch of a tree and have other medicine or objects attached to it. The staff was used in sacred ceremony and in personal meditation to activate and amplify the specific medicine of a person. The staff is a symbol of your journey and growth on a spiritual path and holds your power within it, grounding it into the physical plane. Each initiation and awakening of your life's journey is reflected and represented on the staff, symbolized by a feather, crystal, carving, or, or any other piece of nature that represents the wisdom and, and medicine that has been invoked within you. The staff is an outer manifestation of your power and can strongly assist in holding this weight and can strongly assist in holding this power within you. It's time to journey with your own staff. Oh, and then this tells you how to make your own staff ceremony. Make your own staff. Go for a walk in nature with the intention of attracting a tree branch to use as your staff. While on the walk, ask to be shown some of your own medicine and forms of nature that may hold your power. For example, feathers. Either strip the bark off your branch or sand it back. Attach your feathers and any other materials you wish to use. You may even like to carve some words into your staff. Each time you have a wisdom awakened from within, ask what 
you can add to your staff to symbolize this. Continue to add to the staff as you journey through life. Keep your staff sacred and use it in meditation and ceremony to manifest and ground your power. Oh, this is so awesome. I'm definitely going to do this. This is something that has, I was just thinking about this like two days ago. And I was like, oh, I need to do that. It came. So it's coming here um, with the staff and with Pyrite. Um, so to make your own staff, follow those directions. That is awesome, awesome advice. Uh, to make your own staff, to really honor your journey, honor where you've been. Because with this reading, it really feels like you're somebody who is very spiritually connected or becoming more and more spiritually connected. Um, you're learning about yourself. You're learning about, about balancing your energy, about abundance, about intention, um, about manifestation. And... Uh, I feel like this would be a really, a really good thing for you to do to, to really help center and ground your power and energy and that it kind of feels a little floaty and scattered in a way. And if we were to do that and, and really, um, do this this staff ceremony and make yourself your own staff and um and really and really put your energy into that and when you meditate and when you think about your future and when you're thinking about manifesting hold that staff be with that staff um and also think about Whatever people or person that you feel are working their way towards you, you can um, also kind of feel the essence of your soul family and kind of move that through your, I'm seeing that kind of like magic going around the staff as well. Very cool. Okay, let's get into our last card and that would be our Dragon Fae Oracle. So let's get into that. Our last card. And there it is. Oh, there's two cards here. I'm going to take this first one, but I'm curious what's behind it. Ain and the Guardian, Born Innocent. Very cool. But we just got the one card. Lady of the New Buds, Nurture Tenderness, card number 25. Lady of the New Buds, very spring energy. Like these last couple days, I live in the mountains, so it the weather here is real. And even though I'm in Southern California, the weather here is pretty real. And these last few days have been, um, today's kind of overcast. The sun's coming out now, finally. Um, but these last few days have been so beautiful, so sunny, or even before these last few days, last like week or two, it's been really nice. But this last, <clears throat> this last week, it's like spring has sprung literally in so many ways in nature. And I've just been like bouncing around singing about how awesome, how awesome it is that spring has sprung and how excited and happy I am about it. Um, and so are my cats. They're like, you know, loving it. So here we are with Lady of the New Buds. Okay, the Lady of the New Buds speaks. See how my garden has grown about me. See how my children, the darling buds, clamor for my attention. They cry at night and can be so touchy during the day. I must shelter them from harshness and keep them in a safe place till they are strong enough to branch out. Even then, my watchful eye will look out for their care. You see, so many people see the beauty and do not understand where it sprang from, the rich, roamy soil. The sweet water poured from the water dragon fae into this earth. The minerals of the nature realms, the light of the sun, and the shining sweetness of the crystal moon have all anointed my garden with their blessings. And then there is me. 
so many see my garden and and wonder at it but they do not see the work and the care that has preceded my domain its beauty is a result of love care natural growth and attention to each and every one of its inhabitants when your growth appears around you from the seeds you have planted take time to tend this garden and list the assistance of like-minded souls and just as you would not feed these tender buds poisons and pollutants do not feed your ideas the opinions and energies of those who are not in integrity stay true to the vision of your creation and truly take a little time each day to tend this garden be it of love ideas little ones or creative endeavors until they are robust and begin to grow into their own energy for now it is a tender time the time when the buds are are at most risk from the frost of rejection the poison of judgment and the choke of cruelty be vigilant and you too will have a garden for all to enjoy and love many will feel you are fortunate indeed to have created such a beautiful eden but they will not see the care you have taken to grow this but i have seen i have seen all hmm i love this okay um divinatory meanings and affinity with wildflowers and or flowers and gardens projects need tending care every day for small matters and the large will care for themselves resisting change is resisting the life force itself look at everything in nature the seeds does not the seed does not remain a seed the seedling grows the se the tree seems unrelated to its origins but at the moment by holding on tight to the person you believe you must be you are running the risk of denying your own life force change is positive stasis is a resting point can work well Oh, sorry. Stasis as a resting point can work well. As a life choice, it can be a kind of slow death. The emergence will come at the right time because the bud will be forced to flower at some stage. Do not allow yourself to wither in, in the bud. Divine guidance needs practical application and work. <laughs> Oh my god, action teamed with in inspiration will create a beautiful, bountiful paradise. Work hard at what it is you love. And working with the Lady of the New Buds, herbivore flower readings, growing a new garden with magical and symbolic meaning, coming up with daily routine to nurture and grow your new projects, flower essences, essential oils, accepting compliments for hard work, knowing your efforts have come to fruition and accepting that you have been a driving force for a beautiful achievement. Now I laughed up here because this line, gui divine guidance needs practical application um and work and what do we have here balance spirituality and practicality so those are first card last card coming in together to say whatever it is that is that needs balance it's about it's about looking at the situation for what it is looking at this this thing here nurture tenderness see how things are in process things are changing you are evolving things are are very new right now they haven't yet come into full bloom to see it for what it is to see all the hard work that is has been putting into yourself to the situation so it's something to definitely consider you know again i'm hearing be patient with the process be patient with yourself um allow for time sometimes we could be like it's been two weeks it's like two weeks is nothing it is literally nothing like like patience is so important and necessary to to stay balanced as well because you're not when you're impatient about progress then you're not focused on the now you're focused on being somewhere else and experiencing something else and that takes you out of your own frequency it takes you out of yourself that's why when we're projecting with stress with anxiety we're impatient about stuff where we don't feel good we're not 
like when you see somebody who's rushing and patient, um, you know, complaining, who's, you know, just there's all this chaos. It's like everything around them, their energy is just so, cha yeah, chaotic. It's difficult to witness sometimes somebody being like that. And when we see somebody who's methodical and connected and patient and slow, now I'm not saying that you have to be slow about everything, but when you slow yourself down, then you can really feel your own energy. And from the beginning, it was about balancing your energy, balancing your divine feminine, your divine masculine, decluttering your space, staying positive, being mindful to what you're eating, keeping your energy high vibrational, um, releasing fear and guilt. Uh, we have this whole thing going on, a lot of abundance, a lot of pentacles here, which is really, really great. Um, and this thing with, with other people, this cooperation, this these two knights coming in, saying that, it, um, and maybe it's not necessarily just one person that's going to be with it. It's like a romantic thing. This could be... Um, a couple of people like friends, you know, meeting friends sort of thing. Um, cause there's two here and then you, and then there's three here, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, I'm kind of hearing, well, for some people they may, it may be meeting a group, being connected to some group prior to meeting any one person, like a romantic partner. But it also could be that you meet that one person, that romantic partner. And when you do, it's going, and with that person is, no matter what, with Lady of the New Buds is saying, that person is also very much in this kind of energy on, on in their own way on the flip side. Um, but either way, when you come together, it's going to be very, very robust, passionate, um, electric, but also so like, also very grounding. It'll be like, oh, okay. Like I could put my other foot down kind of thing. Like interesting energy there. Um, because there's these two components coming together. Like each one of you have been like on one foot trying to balance this business out, like your practicality and your spirituality. And it's really difficult to be in that pocket, be in that center. And I kind of see this person coming in and they have a very similar thing, but, but where you lack, they, they have Abund they're more abundant in that when they're where, where they like you're more abundant in that it's like this perfect harmo harmonious coming together like clickety click thing going on balancing this out so again if you're with somebody to take inventory with them let's get more into balance about where we're where we're at now because where you were at a year ago, two years ago, five years ago with a person and where you're at now with yourself and with another person are two totally different places. Where you're at now, where you were two and five years ago, you're a completely different person and we need to take inventory to go forward. Like where, where do we need more balance? Where do we need to be more practical? Where, how do I need to step up my game spiritually? How do I need to step up my game practically? How do I need to separate these out and work from a, and, and work on these, these things, these aspects, um, letting go, decluttering, all this stuff. And, and uh, intention, intention. And don't forget the staff thing to do this. If you don't already have a staff, maybe you already have one, but if you don't really consider making your own staff, because that will, I really feel that will take your, take a lot and put it into this one thing. Remember intention is so important. Having something to, to, um, concentrate your energy on is very important and what is also needs to be done and just be patient and <clears throat> be patient with yourself be patient with the growth be patient with your evolution not everything happens at once instantly we need time to take us through the process to acclimate to what comes up to acknowledge it to 
honor it, to process it, to release it, to heal it, all of these things. There's still more of that going on for you. Again, looking at the declutter card and try to keep your schedule and your time and your energy as, as um, light as possible that you can get that you can get away with that makes sense that isn't going to make things you know so much harder for you you know going forward but if you can extrapolate out some stuff that doesn't need to be there some engagements that you have some some social stuff going on maybe maybe move projects out whatever that it is that you can declutter of your schedule so you can focus on more of of being alone being connected to yourself being in nature um preparing i'm hearing preparing for the future because this is we're still in kind of a preparational stage we're still we're, we're still kind of putting all the the pieces out getting ready for the party like the party hasn't actually started yet we're still preparing but this month this new moon is bringing so much energy to help us with these last and final touches so we can move on okay well number threes i want to thank you so much for being here this is an awesome reading um i hope that it's helped you i hope that it is uh that it resonates again don't forget to check out my website thehealingbutterfly.org for meditations ebooks and of course ways in which i can help you personally with my offerings from tarot to energy work i do a lot of different stuff and i would love to help you if you're so guided please reach out other than that i want to say uh, again have a beautiful new moon and the rest of your april 2021 and i will see you soon infinite love and blessings bye for now Hey there, number fours, and thank you so much for joining me. Let's get into your reading. This is the fourth reading, and we had some really cool ones with the first three. But thank you for joining me, joining me here for this fourth one. There's our card, and let's get right into it. Starting off with Moonology look at the bigger picture oh what are we seeing look at the bigger picture okay i dig that look at the bigger picture full moon in sagittarius <sighs> whoa um and what's so ironic about this, it's like, but you also can't. It's impossible to see everything that's in the works for you right now. Um, but that understand that all of your, all of your preparation, your hard work, it is moving towards something. You may not be able to see it all or to see who's all watching or what's all going on under the surface who's paying attention um but there is it's more like no there's a bigger picture going on just you need to keep doing what you're doing know that there's this much bigger thing that's like your your ability to see everything like it's this big and you're like you can see this much of it and until actually things move a little bit more there's our card we won't be able to see it all um the high priestess <coughs> excuse me listen to your intuition have patience consider carefully what you want before acting okay this is making sense now the high priestess with archangel haniel's number two in the major arcana so we have the fool, the magician, the high priestess. So um, 
it's continue continue to listen to your intuition you've been doing a good job of it you're really into the flow of things you really kind of get like today no tomorrow yes like it may today may not be the right day for fill in the blank tomorrow might be a better day so i'm kind of getting that understanding from you that you do that you do look at the bigger picture that you do know that um there is stuff going on but i'm really honing in on consider carefully what you want before acting it's like is really what you want really still what you're doing and consider what you're good at isn't necessarily what you're meant to do What you're meant to do and what you're good at can be two different things. Where you're meant to focus your energy and what you're and what you're naturally gifted to do could be two different things. To think about and to tap in with the, the energy of this new moon to help you. Uh, and I really wish whatever hair was on my lips. <laughs> that is so annoying. Um what whatever it is it's like i'm hearing things change you've changed and maybe it's time to change your game plan maybe it's time to think about what you're doing on an everyday daily basis and maybe we need to reconsider can't get this thing in the right spot. <laughs> Reconsider what it is that you're doing, where you're focusing your energy, what it is that you're doing all the time, how you're balancing your energy. Oh my gosh, this card that <laughs> keeps comes up for every single one of these readings. <laughs> And it flies out. It's a funny thing. It literally flies out. It's the declutter. <laughs> the declutter card I sh shit you not it popped out before I even started here today and it's popped out in every I think if not every single one maybe not one but I think it's come out in every single one of these readings <laughs> the declutter card unless you were gonna get two more this one and that one okay declutter <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I could read this by art right now. You'll feel better and more focused if you take the time to clear away any clutter from your living and workspace. Donate what you can to help others who may need your items and be sure to keep your schedule uncluttered as well. Okay, so I'm going to say what I've been saying with all of these. Really take a look at your surroundings. Uh, look at what you had. Now, if there's just clutter, like you're like, that's garbage, that needs to be thrown away, that needs to be, like, that's one thing. But when we're talking about the fixtures, the the knickknacks, the pictures, the ornamental stuff, the stuff that's symbolic in your world, maybe it's not all current and should be there right now. You know what I mean? Like maybe it needs to go. So take a couple of days to go through your environment at work, whether it's a cubicle, an office, the whole building, whatever your work is, whatever is your space and take inventory of what is in your immediate space and just go love it, need it, don't care, should go, love it, need it, don't just quick, quick, quick. It stays, it goes, it stays, it goes. And then methodically, purposefully, intentionally over these next few days or through the end of the month, be great to do it before the next full moon or by the end of the month to have done this project and taken out from your environment what no longer fits, what no longer resonates, what needs to go, like what is just taking up space, but you're no longer, it's not giving you anything. And, it, and when you think about it going someplace else or being someplace else, it, it makes you feel good. Okay, so that's one thing. The next thing is the schedule, the calendar. And I think honestly for this, I mean, not the previous guidance and advice is great when it comes to decluttering physical stuff. However, um, 
this other thing with the decluttering is about the schedule is about your your time your energy into whatever it is that you do your social calendar like do you go out every single friday night with your friends <coughs> excuse me if so maybe have a night to yourself at home you know i know we just had the pandemic and a lot of people like that's just an example even if it's a zoom call every single friday that you've gotten into maybe not do that maybe do your own thing and and not be so attached to pe other people and their energy right now declutter your calendar declutter your projects your to-do list pare it down into just a few things for yourself over the course of the next couple of weeks till the end of the month okay now pay yourself first is the next angels of abundance card and it says make yourself the most important financial obligation by setting aside a portion of your income every time you are paid this loving form of self-care ensures that you'll have savings to invest in your present and your future so pay yourself first and save and save by making yourself the most important financial obligation and setting aside a portion of your income every time you're paid this loving form of self-care ensures that you have the savings to invest in your future okay so very simple there um even if it's five dollars it's saying that's a good thing to do they're saying it's a good thing to do to just set it aside or decide i'm setting money aside for this thing i really need to upgrade this thing i really need this thing and i'm going to set money aside for that to do that <clears throat> pretty straightforward here and then conscious consumer is our next card for the angels of abundance and it says you have the power to heal and help the world with your decision to buy only products and services that are ethical and environmentally friendly as a conscious consumer you choose to invest in fair trade and organic goods you live simply and you purchase only what you need <clears throat> so again pretty straightforward here uh um i think that i mean this could be like are there automatic payment shipments things groups something like automatic payments and stuff that it's going out that doesn't need to be <clears throat> that came to mind are there things that you regularly buy that you can switch up and and have it be more conscious use less plastic i'm hearing um really only buy what you need not over buy um if you have children teaching them we're gonna just we're gonna use less we don't need so much um see if I'm getting anything else from here again this live simply is kind of coming back to this this de declutter uh and also pay pay yourself first is also going to declutter it's like saying think about all the stuff that you have that you could sell that you know stuff you could give away stuff you can donate and stuff that you could sell that it's like valuable that you don't use that you could trade for something else or what i trade in for something else sell for something else and or put that money towards like savings for yourself so think about that think about decluttering equaling paying yourself say using that money to save for something else um okay so moving on from the angels of abundance here <clears throat> we're going to get into our uh sacred geometry i'm having such a hard time with that word today sacred geometry cards and i just have the frequency cards pulled out so we're going to get a frequency card for you so we know what frequency will help you at this time Oh, they're stuck. Oh, well, that's interesting. That's not the right kind of card. 
it was a it, what it's part of this deck but it's not a frequency card and it's i'll just show you to you anyway reflect upon life experience a bonus reflect upon life experience reflection but we're supposed to get frequency cards <laughs> So you got 174, my body is safe and loved. Frequency 174, my body is safe and loved. So look into uh, frequency 174. And um, that is going to help us with our bodies feeling safe and loved. Um <clears throat> Prior, but I'm being guided to right now for this one. Okay. My body is loved, safe, and secure. I am free of physical pain and release all negative karmic and emotional energy that has surrounded it. If 174 hertz has been drawn, you're experiencing pain somewhere within your body. This may, may be muscular or skeletal in nature or may even be a headache. You may have an illness or sign of disease that is affecting an organ or bodily sy um, system. <clears throat> and by specific... by Using specific sounds and frequencies, we are able to enhance our senses and create a deeper connection to spirit. Every sound has a different vibration. Frequency 174 does not have a particular sound or color as do those frequencies ranging between 396 and 963. Its particular vibrational frequency has immense healing properties. It is the lowest of the tones and is used for pain management and also has an anesthetic effect. It can work by releasing physical pain and also can be used to release negative karmic holds and energies that reside within your field. <clears throat> okay. Um. <sighs> okay, so I'm not going to, they said that I don't need to get into more detail there so if you're feeling pain if and or when you feel pain in the body 174 is going to help um release that pain and it's also i'm hearing gonna help open you up to understanding why you feel pain because when we feel pain in our body there's some kind of negative dissonance going on that's pushing on joints on on organs on bones on something it's pushing it's it's creating a space it's a hot like for me as a medical medium as a psychic physical empath and energy healer i can touch a body and find that hot spot that painful spot um just because the energy is hot and i feel it differently most people cannot but i can um i can also pick up on that uh, since i work worldwide with people with clients everywhere i could just through my psychic connection i don't need to physically be with the person but i can hone in on a painful spot just being kind of told and, and feeling and seeing that um and no matter how you slice it or dice it pain energy is a dissonance is a negative in the body and it does that to say there's something attached to this that we have a problem here um, unless you know like i fell down and i hurt my my back because i fell down or i tripped or whatever then there, that's a specific that's different that's an energy that's an energy and maybe the universe is saying slow your roll um <laughs> watch where you're going but when there's pain in the body without there being an actual cause that you can say, oh, I did this and this is why it hurts, um, then there's something else going on energetically. And so to also have the intention to um, understand it on a deeper level. All righty, let's move on to our tarot and see what we get with tarot. <sighs> Okay. <clears throat> Nine of cups flipping out. Okay. 
Oh goodness. Couple of cards falling here. Nine of Cups. We have the 19, the Sun, the Knight of Wands. Boy, this card is really on my nerves because it won't cooperate and <laughs> stay right there. Thank you. Okay. Nine of Cups, 19, the Sun, Knight of Wands. Temperance, Two of Cups, and the Magician. Hmm. Muy interesante. Uh, now, let me see here. Okay. <clears throat> Had some come out in reverse, but that doesn't always mean they're meant to stay in reverse, at least not for me in the way I work. So... I like to check in here. So let's see our cards. First, we have the Nine of Cups. Then we have the Sun. Then we have the Knight of Wands. So the Nine of Cups, the Sun, and the Knight of Wands. Then Temperance. Then Two of Cups. And then the magician. So let's see what we got here. I need to fix my pillow. So it's bugging me. All right. Okay, yeah. So it's time to kind of think about changing everything up, or not maybe everything. But definitely, things need to be shifted, reorganized. Um, we need to take a look at, you know, what the plan is, what, where you're, what, like I said from, from the beginning, it's kind of like what, maybe what, <coughs> what you've done isn't necessarily what you're meant to do. And we need to really think about this because I feel with the sun card coming in directly after that, it's like once you decide, screw it, I am, I'm really going to, I'm going to literally do this kind of thing energetically with where I'm at, with what I, what I've been doing with my projects, with even, this could be even be like, the kind of stuff you've been doing creatively if you're an artist and and you're like i'm not really into this anymore but it's just what i do maybe it's time to really think about shifting or if you're not doing something creative but you've been thinking about doing something a lot more creative definitely it's time to think about shifting um to being conscious about that because i really feel that is the energy that you're going to find once you make these choices, these decisions, these changes about what you need to restructure. Um, there's a balancing, a new balancing that needs to take place here. And when I get it close, things kind of wash out. So, um, but this is showing you, this is an angel here and with temperance. And as you can see, he's got the sun, the moon, excuse me. That is a dark moon, is a new moon in this picture. Um, yeah, this is pretty straightforward. Follow your guidance, follow your, um, your guardian angel, be a patient, allow for the income, allow for the in the new incoming light codes, the new set of programs that are coming in, the new ideas, the new like aha moments, because they've been happening a lot through that the Stargate, just like, oh, that's a great idea. I should do that. And just like kind of stuff like that. Um, people being and getting and feeling a lot more creative. I really feel that once you make this decision to really tap in as the high priestess, whoa, as the high priestess here, that um, I can do this. I can do it. Uh, they, that, that greater, higher awareness, that understanding is really going to help you. And remember, we have the high priestess here. We have the magicians who have the one and two cards here. <clears throat> um, with the magician here now 
being this last card is really saying like and with this two of cups is like this blending of your higher self and and your avatar self your human aspect and your soul really tapping in so this whole like nine of cups thing and this look at the bigger picture are, are like together and connected like you need to look at the bigger picture to look at the bigger picture <coughs> We really need to see things differently. And as I say that, I'm focused in on this declutter. So whether it's about shifting things out of your space or creating more time for yourself to look at things differently or both, it's a whole new restructuring thing. And look at how these two cards are so similar. Think about how this feels to see these cards. And the and it's like it's like this 9 of cups is saying, "Okay, we're going to we're going to restructure everything. I'm going to toss all this up, see what falls down, see what comes down to heal because cups water healing. So we need to clear out energy. We need to um kind of lick our wounds, heal ourselves from things that, you know, if you're like I'm still working on that, but it's not quite going anywhere. Or I mean, pulled in this and pushed in this direction instead of this that I've been working on for a while. Allow that to happen. Just, you know, sometimes we need to stop and start with creative projects, writing, painting, drawing, whatever it is, and then go, go back to it. Um, so consider that, but really consider what the energy is after you do that we've got the sun this is the happiest most abundant positive energy that you could possibly get is the sun is saying like this is great amazing energy this is you tapping in this is you receiving this is fruitful and abundant and all of that more fire here with the knight of wands saying that's exactly what you need to do um and you will be guided you will feel balanced it will feel right it will feel very divine you will be like oh okay this makes sense and very quite possibly the stuff that you've been doing and working on is just components of this new thing or things that you're being guided to towards a new a new something again listen to your wish intuition have patience with yourself and consider carefully what you want before moving forward it's like do you are you working on what you really want to be working on are you where you want to be with with whatever it, it this is um because you're being asked to see the greater picture to pull out and see from like your soul perspective your higher self your your guides and guardians and and really be honest like with yourself with what you're doing it's not to say that you're doing anything wrong or bad but to go into this new direction is really going to take you to a place of like a new a definitely a new beginning this magician is tapped in he's ready to receive and he definitely sees a bigger picture. He definitely is like, I don't want to just do what I've always done. I want to do what my purpose is. So I'm willing to hands off all the control and just what it, what is it? Let's be real here. You know, it's like, again, just because you can do something doesn't mean that that's what's meant to always be what you're doing, right? Like it's not. It's not always meant to be what you're doing just because you're good at something. And I that just keeps coming up. Or, or just because you can do something, because you have the ability to do something, doesn't mean that that's where all your focus should be. And um, that it could, it could be other things. I'm really feeling creative energies, connecting with your, with your soul, getting these downloads. Um, being connected in that way and really filling up the cups um, and being connected universally, really connecting in that way. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, let's see what we get with our uh, crystals, our crystal oracle here. What do we have here? Rejuvenation with plant and green tourmaline. Oh my God, I love green tourmaline so much. Uh, card number 23, rejuvenation with tourmaline. Sorry, green tourmaline. Green tourmaline, rejuvenation. It really feels like that. Honestly, it's like, let's revive, let's rejuvenate the who you think you are and what you should be doing here. And if you've been thinking like, I've been doing all this kind of thing and this little birdie has been going, maybe you should be doing this as well or instead of this, or let's split it up. Let's change it up a little. Like something about what you do needs to be changed. And we are talking career. So it could be your actual job you need to change jobs or if you're in business for yourself what about your business do you need to change or do you need to add to do you need to expand on does needs to maybe um not focus so much on this and start doing this and you know like pay attention to the things that come through your email that's on instagram that's on youtube and don't just like blindly mindlessly look at stuff to see stuff and kind of check in like is this meant for me like am I supposed to do something with this and if it sparks something in you then the answer is yes <clears throat> then the answer is yes and <coughs> excuse me I apologize okay 23 Rejuvenation, card number 23. Plant. I love this. Plants, as you can see, I like my plants. <laughs> uh, and I need, I've got this. I'm stuck in my throat, and that's really annoying, especially when you're going to try to read. <coughs> okay. That's better. I needed that. <laughs> okay. This card has made its way across your path as it's a perfect time for you to stop, rejuvenate, and give back to yourself. We live in a crazy, fast-paced world, and it is very easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of life to achieve balance and well-being. There's that word again, balance. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry. To achieve balance and well-being, it is important to slow down and create more experiences that nourish your mind, body, and soul. Have you been feeling flat or burnt out and lacking in energy? Are you confused and have no direction? Is depression and anxiety overcoming you? Do you feel like the world is getting you down? Well, it's time to rejuvenate and sell set yourself free from your current burdens to create some time and space for yourself. Yeah, I think we've been over all of that, right? <laughs> Take this card as a sign to do things that make you feel renewed, such as going on that holiday you have been thinking about, or even just having a weekend away in nature. Perhaps you can gift yourself a healing, relaxing bath and massage to clear your energy and bring balance and rejuvenation. Whatever it is that creates this space, make sure you give it to yourself or you will burn out and be no good to anyone, especially yourself. It is time for you to renew your energy so you can live a life of well-being and balance. Enjoy this sacred time for you and medicine plant known for their healing powers in medicine from the beginning of time plants offer a range of properties that will rejuvenate renew and heal the mind body and spirit oh my god yes the healers and shamans of a tribe would create rituals and ceremonies and take journeys into the spirit world to communicate with the spirits of the plants in this trance-like state the plant spirits would 
teach the healers all about the plant benefits and how to utilize them. Plant medicine has been a foundation of natural medicine for thousands of years. The earliest record being found on clay tablets from the Sumerian civilization. Today, the Chinese are well known for their understanding and use of herbal medicine in many applications. It's now a time to welcome in the medicine of the plants to assist you in creating a healthier mind, body, and spirit. And the crystal is green tourmaline. Green tourmaline connects deeply with the medicine of plants. It balances and, and heals the heart chakra. It assists in creating a deeper understanding. And ceremony, it set the intention to connect to a plant spirit to assist you. Find a quiet place in nature. Close your eyes and focus on your breath as you start to relax. Ask to be taken on a journey to meet the spirit of the plant that will assist you. When you meet or connect with the plant spirit, it will offer you a cup full of this powerful medicine and invite you to drink it. Feel this medicine move into every cell of your body, offering you rejuvenation on every level. Stay in this place for as long as you need to. Come back into the present feeling refreshed, rejuvenated, and renewed. Oh, that's beautiful. <coughs> I love that. <coughs> so... So we have this like balancing. So this is, um, we're talking about balancing here. And our first card was, oh no, that wasn't balance. Sorry, that was, our, that was something else. <laughs> Look at the bigger picture. Sorry, sorry, got confused. Um, I was, that was another card or another read, I should say. Uh, so... Have you been feeling flat or burnt out and lacking in energy? Are you confused and have no direction? Is depression, anxiety overcoming you? Do you feel like the world is getting you down? Well, so kind of what I'm hearing from this, and you may not, you know, resonate with that. I hope you don't, but um, necessarily, you know, to that degree. But basically what I'm hearing here as I read this was like, what? Like, what is out of alignment? Like, what are you doing that is not or no longer in step with where you're at, that you're just going through the motions, that you're not actually, like, into it and passionate about it? And that's what it's kind of saying here. Like, we need to get out of this state of, um, of like, where you've been with what you've been doing. And it just keeps coming up here. Like we need to rejuvenate. We need to recreate the plan. So it's more in alignment with you and where you're actually meant to be going. Um, remember, this is energy that is meant, that is is for you. And it's coming for you. You just need to, uh, you just need to make the space, make those changes. Think like first off declutter, S declutter time and space. So you can f get the guidance on what to do. Definitely, like it said, really consider rejuvenating through energy work, either do, that you do on your own, through self-guided um, healing meditations. I offer a few of them. From cord cutting to um, uh, body love and uh, connecting with your guardian angel to uh, healing abundance and the money wound um, and whatever you're being guided to as far as self-healing meditations um, retreats meditations that you know or meditation retreats or other types of whatever retreats energy work with someone like myself or somebody else or somebody that you've already been to whatever i mean as long as you work on rejuvenating decluttering working with your energy when i'm seeing pay yourself first it's like let's have the energy go here first let's do what we need for ourselves first let's make us feel good first especially as 
if if you're an empath, a light worker, a healer, or a psychic of any kind, if you work for other people, um, as far as you know, guidance in any way, healing in any way, we tend to kind of pile it on and not clear things out and just because people need us so they expect stuff from us or you know we've always been there for them or whatever and if you know if that's the case and you know and it and it's something about changing what you do changing up your offerings changing how you connect um there's something here or if things aren't working or moving as well or is or or they're not or you're not as busy as you would like to be because of maybe it's it's that energy thing maybe you're putting out what you think you should maybe you're offering what you think you should but it's not in alignment with what really makes your you know heart chakra expand and your third eye get all super excited and like i said sometimes what we have done was good for then but it's not good for the future it's not good for us anymore so anyway, let's see what we get with the dragons. <sighs> Gaia's dragon, divine union. Look at this. Wow. Awesome card. <laughs> awesome card here with Gaia's dragon, divine union. One intense card here. So let's see. Uh, card number 37. Okay, Gaia's dragon, divine union. Gaia and her dragon speak. Here are voices, male and female, coiling through and around each other as we speak as one. We are Gaia and her dragon, and we are one being, though separate, just as your divine union will be. Think of the beauty of lovemaking with a partner, the harmony and balance, the yielding and the chase. That which we represent through our perfect union is the divine marriage, the blissful soulmate experience that so many beings long for. True marriage does not mean becoming the same being. Look at how apparently different we are. And yet within that is protection and care, fertility and new growth. Heaven and earth joined together. Is the sky the same as the earth you walk on? No, but look at their harmonious relationship. In exactly the same way, your divine union will not be, well, sorry, your divine union will not be with one who is the same as you, but you will, when brought into divine marriage and perfect balance, provide each other with a home and unity and love, and you will bring out what is best within and without the other. The dragon loves and protects Gaia. Gaia adores her dragon who is, who is the heavens and will bring forth new life as a result of this union. You are loved and have on this planet and within the celestial realm a perfect and divine partner. Beyond history, past lives, and future lives lies this divine union and it, it is and will be yours. And divinatory meanings, bringing into balance matters of the earth and matters of the heavens, balance of the celestial and terrestrial, union between man and woman, beloved child, pregnancy, fertility, creations coming into fruition, meeting true lovers that are faithful, caring, and protective, understanding your own sexual nature, and being free to be who you are, balance of masculine and feminine in your world. Working with Gaia and her dragon. Bring your life in... <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get very far. Bring to your life your innate gift for relationships. Ask Gaia and her dragon for their assistance in allowing each person in a relationship to be fully themselves and yet be in perfect relationship with each other. Know that your relationships can be true, steadfast, and sacred and that integrity in relationships is valued prized and to be kept sacred gaia will assist you in bringing forth ideas even children and can be considered a wonderful goddess to call on for fertility her dragon will assist in calling forth male beings who are honorable trustworthy strong and passionate 
he is able to care for and protect without ever attempting to mute her power and creativity. Such partnerships can exist for you too if you allow them into your life with Gaia and her dragon's help. Oh, it's so lovely. So lovely. I love it so much. Um, okay, so... Aside from the obvious, um, what I'm really hearing here is for those of you who are singles, who don't have that divine union partnership yet, that you doing this decluttering, um, slowing stuff down, rethinking your path and all of that good stuff is definitely... Um, like I'm seeing like a ticket, like the boat, the ticket to get on the boat to meet your divine counterpart. Your, I mean, your, your, this divine union, your, your person, um, that there's also this, uh, this energy going on with them as well. So there's this, um, it showed me this, like, even though you don't see it, even though you don't know them, even though you're not in each other's lives in the physical yet, it's like you row this way and then they row that way. And you're, you're pushing forward with your left foot. They're pushing forward with their right foot kind of thing. Like there is this already balancing thing going on. Um, that you can't even see but as you work on you having that higher perspective you getting in touch with what it is you really want and going for it remember that was the high priestess listen to your intuition have patience consider carefully what you want before acting this is talking about like don't just because you've done it always doesn't mean you need to continue doing it you need to rethink you need to restructure you need to reorganize you need to shift and change the energy in your world in your home in your office with your work with your relationships and on the inside as well and that remember this rejuvenation so rejuvenation coming through um saying we need we need to revitalize we need to scrub stuff out we need to clear and heal energy definitely plants are coming up and saying go into nature bring nature into your home as you can see i do that i mean this is just a little corner of my world and look at it and um the more you bring nature inside plants flowers animals um you know anything like that but plants and flowers you know fresh cut flowers and plants um are so good for you for your energy they just lift they just clear the uh, the air clear the energy all the time there's something so very life-giving when you take care of a plant, when you, you know, water it and give it sun and give it love. And, and, um, and so, to, so look around your home. How many plants do you have? If it's under three house plants, make it a point to get three house plants by the end of the month. It can be a little baby like this. Look at how adorable five bucks or 5.99 i got this at ace the other day and i absolutely love it i got it too hot and close to my candle there earlier but it was just one little leaf thank goodness um but anyway just start you can start with something small it doesn't have to be gigantic but three is the number that's coming through that's that would be really great for you to consider to have three plants in your home and go to go to a, a garden center go to a home depot go to your local flower shop um and and look around and and just see what speaks to you see what reaches out to you what plants are you know are calling to you and what what you decide to take home with you that'll really really help you i think it's it's a it, that's big time so um 
Uh, so I was, you know, Gaia to go back to that card, even though we are here with Gaia's dragon, because, you know, we're talking about Gaia, Gaia's nature, Gaia's plants, Gaia, you know, this is all connected. Um, so that that's coming through again with rejuvenation and give yourself time and space. Allow for your guidance to come in on how to help you best clear energy, declutter um, and and because that's going to help you restructure whatever it is that needs to be restructured. Whatever it is you need to stop focusing here, whatever that is, and shift it here. And, um, or into these things. It could, could be a couple of things. But it's like less of this, more of this. And um, so think about and consider what that is. And then again, this whole union thing, as you do that, your divine union is, as you move forward, they're moving forward and you're moving closer together. Now, if you're with somebody already, um, what I'm being shown here is don't decide to start changing these, you know, decluttering and and changing shifting from this to this and changing what you're doing without talking to this person so you want to talk to this person you want to get their input they're you're in a union with them and they can help you and and they can and you can say hey so i'm thinking about maybe stopping doing this and starting doing this what do you think how should i do that i really feel pulled to to do this kind of work now or to leave this job and maybe look for this kind of job or whatever it is you need that support that union is very important don't try to do that alone and through this communication it will help you um it will help you with your path forward um and in the off chance that this person isn't supportive in this new direction that you're thinking about going in then maybe it's time to consider with everything else, maybe it's time for for that to be the change in what, you know, really that that could be a thing that that you need to break away from this person that you're connected to because maybe maybe the real divine union person for you, your real soulmate is going on this other path. So that's just something to consider. Don't mean to throw a wrench in everything if you if you have somebody, but if you do have somebody and they're not supportive and this is just kind of a chain reaction or another link in the chain of uh, other things like this of the certain of that kind of certain flavor if they don't understand what you need energetically, maybe they're just in a different place. Maybe you're an empath and they're not. And one thing for sure is empaths need fellow empaths. So so that could be as simple as that if you're like, oh, well, my person is definitely not an empath and you are. I'm not saying that tomorrow's the day to split up because maybe it's not. But I do know that empaths need empaths. And at some point in the relationship, when an empath is with somebody who isn't an empath, it becomes abundantly clear that this relationship is not meant for uh, for forever because empaths need empaths. It's just it's just a thing. It's very necessary for people to have that same same energy when it comes to an intimate, bonded. Um, sacred type of a union because they need to understand you on that empath level and it's not just loving you or not being sensitive or being sensitive it's so much deeper than that and again if this if the whole empath thing might be new to you if you're wondering like well what's that please check out my website thehealingbutterfly.org check out that uh that book that i have for empaths the the essential empath guide there's a test there and give yourself the test and just read about what it is to be an empath um if that's new to you okay and i think we're done here there isn't anything else that's coming other than just know that um we have the two of cups here uh, so aside from you and your, your soul coming together, information downloads, we have Gaia, Gaia's dragon or Gaia and her dragon or Gaia's dragon here. That's about divine union. And I also see this very much as like you with your soul, you with your soulmate, 
uh, you with what you do, these like union, 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 and the need to, you know, restructure, rethink, throw everything up, see how it lands. You need to rejuvenate your energy. This is very, very necessary rejuvenation. And this kind of feel very similar to me along with declutter and seeing the bigger picture. Look at the bigger picture, not just the picture that you've already painted for yourself that you've already been, you know, living in, but the bigger picture because there's something much bigger there for you. Um, it's just, it hasn't, we haven't seen it yet, but we need to see it because it is definitely coming through. And once that happens again, we got this sun ready to pop, ready to pop. All right there, lovely. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this reading. And again, check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org. Until next time, infinite love and blessings. Bye for now.